Stadium in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The Three Rivers, the Allegheny, and the Monongahela. <laughs> they come together to form the Ohio. As you look now at downtown Pittsburgh, the Golden Triangle, and it's the site today of the Dallas Cowboys against the Pittsburgh Steelers. And a game that means so very much to both these football teams. I'm Pat Summerall with Tom Brookshire. What else do you have to say? This is a rematch of Super Bowl number 10. And if either guy or anybody on the team didn't get taped up, it's their own fault. Now, both <laughs> teams are very physical, Patrick, but uh, the Steelers have had 21 fumbles and 17 interceptions, and that's a, a minus 13 takeaway type factor. And Dallas eats you up. You play that kind of football on a day like today. This is the first time they've met since that Super Bowl of two years ago. They played in preseason, and Dallas shut out the Steelers 30 to nothing. And it might have been preseason, but don't think that's not a memory. And one of Bradshaw's greatest games was in the Super Bowl, and Lynn Swan was the MVP, and Lynn Swan is the Lynn Swan of two years ago. He's dynamite. So health is not really a factor. Both teams are in pretty good shape. There are some injuries we'll tell you about in just a minute. But our friend Herrera has got the ball teed up at the 35. Obviously, Pittsburgh has won the toss. And Jim Smith is number 86, the rookie from Michigan. And back with him is number 85, Ernie Pugh. Alvin Maxson also back there for the Steelers, and that's Supreme Herrera. I tell you, he's a factor. He's hit 17 of 23 field goals, his last six in a row. And Pittsburgh, uh, around here, they don't even let Jarella kick field goals. He hadn't kicked one in four games or tried one. Hasn't even tried one in four games, which is a... I don't know who keeps those records, but that's got to be one of the most amazing stats of all time. And here's Herrera. In the direction of Jim Smith from Michigan. At the 10, he takes it. And Smith has got some room on the outside and gets to the outside to about the 34 before he is stopped by one of those guys who always seems to be there. Number 31 for Dallas is Benny Barnes. The Steelers on offense and the Cowboys break on defense. That's the Pittsburgh backfield. Bradshaw's playing his sixth game with a fractured left wrist, and he's got a pretty good cast on it. But he's throwing the ball well, and all the interceptions to these receivers are not Bradshaw's fault, obviously. The Pittsburgh offensive line, Cole Davis, Webster, Quack, and Larry Brown. They used to be a tight end. On first down now, Steelers have the ball at their own 33. And Bradshaw gets to Harris, and Franco slants outside the 35. Stopped by Jethro Pugh, but Franco Harris picked up about four. Picked up where he left off, right? can't remember when he has met a thousand yards rushing this year if Franco stays at what a 63 yard average he'll break a thousand yards for the sixth straight year which is an incredible mark isn't not it? too many folks have done that he is fourth in the AFC in rushing at this point he got four and his second and six and they're looking at a Dallas 4-3 we'll set the deep ones for you in just a second this is Rocky Blyer D.D. Lewis and Bob Brunig two of the Cowboy linebackers converge on him this is the building that Art Rooney built here in Pittsburgh. And that defense, by the way, is Ed Jones, Jethro Pugh, Randy White, and Harvey Martin. Martin with 16 sacks, by the way. He's the right defensive end against Cobb, the big left tackle. That should be quite a battle on the line. Always has been. Rocky Blyer lost a yard. Third and seven make it. And Bradshaw's first pass, perhaps, coming up right here. And the Cowboys remember number 88, Lynn Swan. This is not a pass. This, of course, is Frank O'Hara. And it's not a first down. Charlie Waters made the tackle. Darn Franco hits the hole fast. I don't know why we're so impressed with that fact, but at 225 pounds and 6'3", he really hits the hole quicker than most big men. Maybe Jimmy Brown's the only other one I can think of that size that hits it any faster. Number 77 for the Cowboys was Bill Gregory, who had come in on that third down situation, and Bobby Walden, number 39, is the Pittsburgh kicker. And he's been there almost as long as Art Rooney. He's kicked 953 punts in this league. <laughs> Butch Johnson deep in single safety for the Cowboys. And here is Walden's punt. Trying to get out of bounds. Not a very good punt. Bounces to Butch. Butch gets away from one. Gets out to about the 27-yard line before he's stopped by number 66, Ted Peterson. And already some boos. And I'm assuming that's for Bobby Walden, the punter. The kickers these days have a right to be paranoid. Everybody is really uh, analyzing. Here's the offensive backfield. Roger Staubach having one of his greatest years, really, and he keeps adding those on. Dorsett in his first start. There are the receivers. 
Don't forget Billy Joe Dupree, the tight end. He's caught three TDs the last three games. And that's the offensive line. Neely, Lawless, Fitzgerald, Rafferty, and Donovan. Roger Staubach, the quarterback on first down to Tony Dorsett. Of course, as you would expect, a great local favorite here in Pittsburgh, Jack Ham, number 59, the linebacker who made the tackle. That, Roger Staubach. Defensively, uh, facing Roger in this offense, Steve Furness is now at left defensive end because Greenwood still has the knee problem. Joe Green, as always, in the middle. Ernie Holmes and Dwight White. And remember, Dwight White had a pretty good sacking day when they played in Super Bowl X a couple of years ago. I do remember. You saw that game here on CBS. It's not operating correctly. And until it's corrected, the line judge on the field will keep the time. Perhaps you heard that from Bob Frederick, who's the referee. The Pittsburgh defensive line, Tom Brookshire was just talking about. Furness, Green, Holmes, and White. And the linebackers. The linebackers. And Dirk Winston, the young rookie from Arkansas at the middle spot. And in place of Lambert, he's going to be tested a lot. The secondary, Thomas, Blunt, Allen, and Edwards put together because of the injury to Donnie Shell. Dorsett and Newhouse, the running backs, on second and eight. Draw back to Newhouse. Newhouse trying to cut back. A great play by number 59, Jack Hayne. Got a pretty good block on Furness at the defensive end, but the linebackers really covered for it. And Jack Ham is that too small size linebacker. I guess if he came out right now, you might not draft him. But he comes from Penn State, which must mean something. Watch the good block on Furness. He goes down. Watch Ham play off the block. Just gets enough to make the tackle, doesn't he? Preston Pearson and Dorsett are the running backs for Dallas now. Or the receivers for Dallas, if you'll make it, as the Cowboys go shotgun for the first time. Outside Preston Pearson. And plenty enough for a Dallas first down chased out of bounds by Lauren Taves, number 51. It does make it look easy. Now, don't ask me where Preston comes from. He's like the masked man that just comes riding through town. Watch him. He never looks like he's in a hurry. It's a straight drag-out pattern, which is an easy one for Roger to read. They handled, by the way, a Joe Green stunt coming up the middle in extremely good shape. Roger had a lot of time. And, of course, Preston Pearson at one time played with the Steelers. He was picked up as one of the great acquisitions of all time, I suppose, in pro football by the Dallas Cowboys. They got him for $100. He's paid him back. Here is Newhouse breaking a couple of tackles and making a what looked like nothing into about a five-yard gain before he was stopped by Taves and Blunt. New house is so darn short. I don't believe Dwight White realized he had the ball carrier trapped. If he came out of an armpit to make that. He's averaging four yards a shot. His numbers on his jersey are so long they go down in his pants, or he's so short, whatever the case might be. And, Pat, it's this shifting that the Dallas offense has always done up and down that might give the young middle linebacker a little bit of a, a recognition problem. So it is a second down situation for the Cowboys as Newhouse shifts behind Staubach. 11 yards to go for that first down and a draw play as Dorsett. He did not get back to the line of scrimmage and a flag is down as well. The old holding call and it didn't fool Pittsburgh. Ernie Holmes really made a good play that time. Very strong inside. Oh, offsides Pittsburgh. The referee, as I mentioned a minute ago, is Bob Frederick and he's the guy whose voice you'll hear in just a minute as he notifies us who committed the foul. The umpire is Lou Palazzi. I hope he doesn't call Joe Green's number out. <laughs> He's mad about those guys in striped shirts. Here comes Bob Frederick. Defense, right tackle offside, second down. No number, just the right tackle. I'm not so sure it shouldn't be that way anyway. I don't like to identify the guys when they make a, a legitimate mistake trying to get a jump on the ball. I think we might do these players an injustice by... Knock I know who the right tackle is. Detroit defeated <laughs> Tampa Bay 16 to 7. The Buccaneers now 24 losses in a row. And welcome to our broadcast here at Three Rivers Stadium in Pittsburgh, where the score is nothing, nothing. Pat Summerall with Tom Brookshire's short set squirts through for a first down for the Dallas Cowboys. And that's where he is so valuable. Jim yeah. Allen made the tackle. I'll tell you, for a guy you think runs outside, he doesn't run that well outside. He runs inside. And he's tough and he's strong in the legs. He does all his moving inside the shoes. Very little extra work is needed. 
You know, that's a great misconception, I think, that many fans have, that a guy, just because he's fast and just because he's quick, doesn't mean that he necessarily runs outside well. Philadelphia 16, St. Louis 14. That's his third quarter score. We'll keep you posted. First down, Dallas, the ball at the Pittsburgh 41. Starbuck drops. Can't throw. Ernie Holmes and the rest of the steel curtain converge on Roger Staubach. All right, that's the 21st sack. Now watch Joe Green, number 75. He actually goes beyond the line of getting Roger Staubach. Now watch him. Rafferty, the young guard, is holding and everything. Joe Green is the one that forces Roger back up inside, and there's the locomotive. Another view of that. Watch this now. Watch number 75 take the young guard, who weighs about 252, and just shove him right on back through the pile. Player, I'll tell you that. On second down now, and 17 yards to go, Staubach gets to Dorsett, and Tony picks up about 10. Tony Dungy made the tackle on Dorsett. He got back past the original line of scrimmage. It'll be third and nine. Remember, they're doing this without Jack Lambert, and he's the holler guy that Make sure everybody's up on every play. And right now, Joe Green's having to assume that. The guy in the middle who's taken Lambert's place is number 53, the rookie from Arkansas, Dirt Winston. <laughs> and he likes the nickname, Dirt Winston, too. <laughs> Here he comes over to the sideline as you look at the rivers outside this stadium. A super location in the first quarter. You're looking at the NFL on CBS. Nothing, nothing between the Cowboys and the Pittsburgh Steelers. A rematch of the Super Bowl of two years ago in Miami when the Steelers won. Downtown Pittsburgh has undergone a great renovation in recent years, and Chuck Knoll in recent years has done a great renovation job on the Pittsburgh Steelers. They're two of the newest buildings and <laughs> most established ones in the new Pittsburgh, right? Joe Green, number 75, of course. But number 78 is Dwight White. And Patrick, it was always a city where if you didn't want to come in and buckle on a helmet, don't come to play football. It's always been a work ethic football team. Tough. I remember when we used to come here and play and played at old Forbes Field. And you wore your helmets at all times. <laughs> but a great place to play. And, of course, Art Rooney and Dan Rooney and the Rooney family have done a remarkable job in this city as well as with this football team. They are as much of an institution as the NFL itself. Third and we'll make it eight for the Dallas Cowboys first quarter. And for you stat freaks, Tony Dorsett in three carries has 20 yards. It looks like he might be on the motorbike today. Tony Dorsett and Preston Pearson both in the backfield now as Roger Staubach goes back in that familiar shotgun formation for Dallas. Dorsett stays in the block. Staubach throws to the outside. And Jennifer Golden Richard broken up by Jimmy Allen. Number 45, normally a cornerback, now playing safety. Watch him work. Boy, he has good speed. He has 4-4 four, four speed for the 40, and watch the recovery he makes. Roger does not throw this ball extremely well. He sort of had to throw it over Furness's rush, and the ball was a little bit end over end. You could almost read Roselle's name on the side of it. That, of course, the commissioner who signs every <laughs> football. Danny White is number 11 with his back to you now on 4th and 8. The Cowboys have to punt. White standing at his own 45. They try to block it, but don't get it. White trying to go out of bounds. Jim Smith back there. And White did a pretty good job. They're coming out outside the 10 to mark it down at the 13-yard line where the Steelers will take over. This telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League. It's intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Pittsburgh Steelers and the National Football League is prohibited. Good pass rush by Pittsburgh. Got the ball back for the offense, right? Once upon a Brothers Graham, Wednesday at 8 p.m. 7 Central and Mountain Time here on CBS. And right now on CBS, the Steelers go into action against the Cowboy defensive unit. Rocky Blyer. 
Wrapped up, I believe, by Randy White. From behind Bradshaw, look again. All right, Bradshaw may not want to put it up early and have one of the turnovers that have been so darn costly this year. Gets pretty good blocking inside, but White comes over the top of a good block and gets help from Harvey Martin and company. And look at Waters up on the line of scrimmage. There he is, number 41. He cannot stay there on every play. He's got to do some guessing. For 75 on Dallas defense is Jethro Pugh. Two-yard pickup, second and eight for Bradshaw. Franco Harris and Rocky Blyer, the running backs. Franco outside the 20. Cliff Harris made the tackle. <laughs> Franco was coming downhill as soon as he took the handoff and an extremely low, hard-running target. Brunig, of course, has sort of been nicked with injuries, the middle linebacker playing for Dallas. And remember, the Cleveland secondary tried to come up and support the defensive run, and Bradshaw threw Cleveland silly. Those 49ers have won four in a row, shooting for five, and they lead the Rams now three to nothing. First quarter score on the West Coast. Third down here and two. Bradshaw to Harris. Won't get it. Uh, flag down on the far side of the field, Patrick. It's something on that line of scrimmage. Harvey Martin made the tackle. The reaction of the crowd would tell you and tell us that the violation is against Dallas. And so they're even on offsides one and one. Here's Harvey Martin. 16 sacks. For a guy that has the beautiful Harvey Martin radio program, that's hard to believe that he could just work a microphone sweet and easy, but he does. Defense, offside number 41, first down. Charlie Waters <laughs> is number 41, your safety man offside. Just your average safety man's offside, right? <laughs> <laughs> you don't hear that one too much. So it's a Steeler first down, and Bradshaw being chased by Bruni, and still being chased, fires up in the air. And it's knocked out of bounds in front of the Steeler bench. Stallworth was there, so was Benny Cunningham. I think you said the magic words. Here's the pass rush. Martin stays outside. They had a stunt going anyway, so he had the outside angle. Bradshaw shouldn't have thrown it. Now watch Cunningham, the big tight end, keep this from being intercepted. Down the field, that is. Watch this now. He's 250 pounds. A real meat on the hook. Now watch this tight end. He'll just go through and destroy the secondary that almost makes the interception. Throw it. Okay, Terry. He collapsed everybody right into the Steeler bench. Cunningham is a brute. Second and ten situation for Bradshaw and the Steelers now. The Cowboys still line up in the irregular 4-3. No extra backs. No extra linebackers. Flag goes down. Blyer gets the carry. Randy White is the first guy to hit him. I wonder if you can overstun a little bit against this kind of a rushing game with Blyer and Franco both such good inside runners. If you overstunt, you can make your defensive linemen uh, give a lot of their ability up there, that balance system. Maybe that's going to happen. Again, I believe the violation is against Dallas. Yeah, there he goes. Bob Frederick. Defense, offside number 72. Second down. Too tall Jones is the guy who's offside. He is so big, he's offside when he comes into the stadium. All well, he have to just put his hand down, and he's got a yard on you. 6'9", 265. Second and five. Line of scrimmage is the Pittsburgh 32. No scores yet. Franco Harris. Outside the 35 to perhaps the 36, stopped by Cliff Harris. Good block by Jim Clack, number 50. He turned outside on Harvey Martin, and pretty good hole. Again, if you stunt a lot, watch to the right of your screen. Now watch number 50. Come over and keep Harvey Martin completely turned off the play, and Harvey was not down low enough to protect the inside. Seven minutes exactly left to play. In quarter number one at Three Rivers Stadium, Pat Summerall with Tom Brookshire. Nothing, nothing score as Rocky Blyer tries for the first down and is close. Harvey Martin stacked it up. We might have to measure this one. Didn't get much. Franco has 20 yards now. Franco is now the 13th leading career rusher of all time in this league. He just passed 
one of the toughest there ever was, Bill Brown of the Minnesota Vikings. Here's that play again. Short yardage, and again, nothing fancy about Pittsburgh football or Dallas defense. Watch Rocky stick it in there. He's trying for it on second effort and might have had the whistle called in between. He cannot hear on those two plays. First down, Steelers nevertheless. Terry Bradshaw, the quarterback. Dallas flexes that defense. Franco Harris flexes straight ahead. And boy, he got nothing. Jethro Pugh made some strong play. Led by the whole rest of that left side, including Too Tall Jones. The Baltimore Colts, the Jets, 26 to 6 in the third quarter at Shea Stadium. Bradshaw wanting to be very careful. Again, uh, Harris and Waters are both on the line of scrimmage a lot, but when you want to throw it, somehow they're back in those deep post zones where Lynn Swan and Stahl would like to run. He's got to be careful. Bradshaw drops here to come. Screen pass knocked away by Harvey Martin. I said they were at Chase Stadium. They are in Baltimore. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know if Harvey realized he could have caught that or not. He swatted it like a, a big bear trying to get a trout out of that stream. Watch this. It's a quick stream, a screen left. And Harvey Martin, they got a safety blitz. As Randy Hughes, it almost got to him. But Harvey just swatted. And so it'll be a third down situation. Nine to go. 5.39 left to play in the first quarter. No scores yet. The Steelers and the Cowboys. Dallas drops back. No blitz this time. Bradshaw goes deep for Swan. Benny Barnes back there with him. Good coverage. Oh, that looked like the Super Bowl again. Well, I'll tell you, Barnes made an incredibly good play. The ball was thrown about as well as you can throw it. The only trouble was that the defender's arm got in between. Look at this pass blocking. I mean to tell you, a blue and white shirt doesn't get close. And nobody can flat throw it any better than the man you're seeing right now, number 12. Look at this. It's right on. And then it's off. Dynamite play. The other Dallas defender is Cliff Harris back there with him. Help from the free safety man. There's a lot of help. Bobby Walden as Butch Johnson at the 30-yard line signals for a fair catch. Dallas tried to block the punt. Didn't get it, obviously. It'll be Cowboy first down at their own 30. No score. 5.25 left to play first quarter. It started to rain a little bit earlier in Pittsburgh, but that has gone away now. And the weather is cool but good. I wonder if the pressure Dallas tried to put on Walden uh, won't pay off before the game is over. It was not a good punt. And even though they don't get there, it's like the almost sack that a defensive team can get it. It might be a plus factor later on. Well, it's one thing to stand back there and kick it with nobody coming. It's something else when there are a lot of rushers and they start to make you hurry. Walden has punted twice. Neither one has been a very good effort. Thirty-three yarder and a thirty-one yarder. And the field position for Landry's Cowboys has been not the greatest, but uh, not shabby either. Talk about favorites. That guy walking in front of Landry just a minute ago is a great favorite and should be here in Pittsburgh. That was Ernie Stotner. It's a new disguise on Tom Landry. That's the first time I've seen him in that in the wet golf gear. <laughs> True. Where's this Tyrolean hat? <laughs> you had it. <laughs> it's a first down Dallas at their own 31. And on first down, Roger Staubach goes back to throw and throws to Dorsett. About four, J.T. Thomas, the tackler. There is Tony Dorsett. Comes from nearby Aliquippa, Pennsylvania. Hopewell High over there. The main thing is that he didn't catch the ball much playing for majors in Pittsburgh U, but he's just caught his 17th pass. Wait till he learns the pass routes. It's going to be a little bit nasty to cover. Atlanta 20 to 14 over New Orleans, and you talk about the good jobs that are being done around the league. Lehman Bennett has done one of them at Atlanta. And Shulet Miami's done another. Roger Starback is another guy who's done one of those good jobs. 
They'll make it second and six for Dallas. And again, Rogers going to throw. Outside screen to Newhouse, and Newhouse ducks number one. Lauren Taves was the first guy to get him. And then Dwight White came over to make sure. And you know, Taves' biggest problem has been replacing Andy Russell, and you can't replace a great all-pro like Andy, and Taves has just played super. Makes one of those plays that time that I imagine everybody thought, by golly, Andy Russell's gone, but we got a good player in there. And Lauren Taves is number 51. Look at that group. Ernie Holmes, Mike White, Joe Green, Steve Furness. Dorsett and Pearson both in the same backfield. It's third and 12 now. Draw back. Lined up shotgun. Has to go down. Joe Green. Dwight White. Steve Furness. Ernie Holmes. I believe it was Furness coming to the inside on the stunt that breaks through. Watch the right part of your screen and see what number flashes. There's Fitzgerald getting back. Rafferty's having some trouble with Green, and here comes 64 down the slot. And by the way, it was a very shallow shotgun. I don't believe Roger was more than four and a half or five yards behind the center, Fitzgerald. So Danny White goes back in punt formation. That is Jim Smith. And he hasn't fair caught a punt all year here in Pittsburgh. A speedy rookie who watched his alumni defeat Ohio State yesterday. A snap on a bounce, but White feels it nevertheless. And Smith, at his own 39, speeds to the sideline. Out of bounds he goes in front of the Dallas bench. Guy Brown is the guy who knocked him out of bounds. So Pittsburgh on offense. Dallas goes to defense. Got a slight discussion. Indication is holding against the Steelers. That's been another bugaboo that Knowles had to put up with. They have committed the penalties at precisely the wrong time and against the wrong people, like Houston, Denver, and Baltimore. Their record is five and four. Dallas is eight and one. Let's see who did it. Holding on the punt return, number 45. That's Jim Allen. As you look down at the Steeler bench and look at the guy who has turned the whole thing around here, Chuck Noll. Chuck Noll's first year here was dismal to say the best. One in 13, if I recall, wasn't it? Then he turned it around and they've happened to make a couple of Super Bowl trips and not done badly, I'll tell you. They have defeated Dallas and they have defeated Minnesota. Minnesota, they did in convincingly. Dallas was a great football game. Not much finesse, just a lot of good football. Joe Green, number 75, who goes about 270, or 275 to go with his number. A first-round draft choice of years ago who has turned out to be one of the magnificent ones. He said last week after the narrow win over... Cleveland that it's not time to talk it's time to just execute and play football again it looks like uh, they're doing it so far huh? it is nothing nothing in Pittsburgh at Three Rivers Stadium with three minutes and 12 seconds left to play in the first quarter Steeler first and 10 at their own 33 no score Pat Summerall with Tom Brookshire in Pittsburgh, the Cowboys and the Steelers. Again, the flex from Dallas. A handoff to Franco Harris and Randy White. When he goes into that position, he is so quick. And the cutoff block is impossible. And Patrick, that is a play from the 50s when they open up a back and that defensive tackle will see Flyer open up and just take the outside a little bit and that's the guy they kick out. You know, Pittsburgh has only scored two touchdowns all year in the first quarter. And they're a good team. You wonder why they don't get on the board earlier, don't you? Got a lot of good players. Four-yard pickup. Bradshaw gives this time to Franco Harris, who just got around the outside. Loses the football. Dallas has it. Thomas Henderson 
Hollywood gives the ball to the Cowboys. Who made the contact? Brunig that forced this. Watch number 53, and let's see. Fumble number 22 lost. 22 fumbles. And I'll tell you, that might be one of the most destructive things that can happen to an offense. Here it is. Cliff Harris makes the tackle and puts the helmet right into the football. That's what knocked it loose. Harvey Martin trying to find a handle, but Henderson does. And Dallas has it first and 10 at the Pittsburgh 37. No score with two minutes and 31 seconds left to play in the first quarter. Dorsett goes behind Newhouse. The fake is to Dorsett. The throw is by Starback. It's Billy Joe Dupree wide open. Dallas first down inside the 25. Jack Ham got him out of bounds. Good read by Roger Staubach. A lot of people have always said he's not the best reading quarterback. He wanted Drew Pearson coming across. He went to his secondary receiver who was really wide open. There was a discussion as Bob Frederick indicated just a second ago that the Steelers were offside. And of course Dallas will decline. I hope they decline to give us the number. <laughs> but I don't want to repeat it. Defense, number 64 offside, refused. First down. Here's the play from the end zone. Watch Roger now. Come back with the flow of the eye going this way. Now they cut off and make sure that Dorsett doesn't. He looks for Drew Pearson now quickly back to the right side, and everybody's looked off. The play's wide open. It's the first down, Dallas at the Steeler 24. Dr. Staubach gives to Tony Dorsett. He swings to the outside. Gets away from one or two. Boy, is he quick. Incredible. He had no chance. Furness had him cut off before he ever took the handoff, and he did a little dip. He must have legs that are as long as Wilt Chamberlain's. I've never seen such a stride when Dorsett gets it underway. Ernie Holmes finally made the tackle, but Dorsett turned disaster. Into a six-yard game, second and four. A minute 50 left to play in the first quarter. No scores yet. Roger Staubach calls it. Newhouse to about the 15. Furness, the first guy to hit him, over 64. And Pat, remember, Lambert is averaging 10 solo, unassisted tackles a game at the middle linebacking spot. The wild man, the big guy that's a turn-on fella. He's got the, the bad stretch ligaments of the knee, and he's missing his third game. And that time I watched Dirk Winston, and Winston plugged it off in good shape. And this bunch will try to take care of their young middle linebacker, but that's not easy. He is number 53, Dennis Winston, also known as Dirk. From Arkansas. Third down situation now, about one. Dorsett a new house. Dorsett gets the call, and Dorsett gets inside the 15. He might have a first down, and he might not. Safety man Jim Allen made the first contact, number 45. We're about three tackles, shoulder to shoulder on that one. Dorsett didn't get much movement. If it's fourth, it looks like the Cowboys might go. Remember, if Ren Herrera has six straight field goals, here come the sticks. What would you go for? Would you take three against this defense, or would you try to break it and get that first touch? I'd take the three. But you're a kicker. So is Herrera. <laughs> and a good one. You better believe it. Regardless of our opinion, Tom Landry's going to go for the first down. There's a little bit of a debate going on. Now the decision is made. Out goes Butch Johnson. Denver and Kansas City in the fourth quarter tied 7-7. That's sort of a shocker. Preston Pearson is in there with Dorsett. And Newhouse. Three backs. Fourth and one. Dorsett is the deep one. About a foot. Dorsett hurdles over the top, and I think he got it. And I guarantee you, his body did not come down on ground. He is on a pyramid of players. Looks like something from a jambalaya somewhere. <laughs> Watch this, Patrick. His body will never touch the rug out there. 
up and over out of what used to be called an old short punt formation. That looks like Bourbon Street Super Bowl week. <laughs> well done. Steelers are asking Bob Frederick again to measure. He's looking over. I think if Joe Green came up and asked me, I'd, I'd get the chains out there. Whatever he said. They're bringing out the chains. And they'll be darn careful. <laughs> Okay. Belly to belly and back to back. And my friends, that's football. That's known as the Three Rivers stack. <laughs> First down for Dallas. A ball of the Pittsburgh 13. No scores yet. 13 seconds left to play in the first quarter. Probably the last play coming up right now. So a set is going to score. And uh, is he quick? Is he something? And you know something? He knew he had it when he crossed the 10-yard line. He started to spike on the five, but you know he's not a spiker. And a very unassuming man. How he handles all that he's been given at such a young age, I don't know, but he's classic. They started with a trip formation left and then shifted back. Watch Lawless coming across. A super trap on Furness. It's over. Watch him start to tell you. He knows it now. Boy, that makes life easy for an offensive guard. All you have to do is stand up in front of the guy. And he's so quick, he's passed. Just get a piece, huh? Right. Fran Herrera has it knocked away. 6-0 Dallas. Herrera had missed only one extra point all year. So that's number two. Watch it. Let's see where it comes from. Oh, my gosh, it's from behind. It was Dennis Dirt Winston, the middle linebacker, and he went up over the stack to get the block. He's only 6'2". I think he could stuff it, though. Look at him jump. Watch number 53. Here's a touchdown. Here's a touchdown. Look at this. It's just a weave in, take the good trap block on Furness. Jack Ham couldn't even handle him. He's tackled all of them. Tony Dorsett, the Dallas touchdown, CBS Sports Spectacular as the Los Angeles Times 500 next Saturday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time. It also has the countdown to the Super Bowl and the world's strongest men competition. And le next week, it's the girl lift. The girl lift? Right. About the only competition I might have had a chance in. Dorsett. The touchdown for Dallas. This is Jim Smith. He finds the room and stays on his feet. And Jim Smith gets out to about the 39. He lost the football, but the Steelers got it back. From the end zone, look again. And I'll tell you, Dallas covers these kickoffs. First, they get good height by Herrera. They've allowed only 21 yards average. But this young man from Michigan can play. We told you on punts, he doesn't fair catch. And on kickoffs, he's always thinking about going the distance. Herrera made the tackle. Five! Five on the 50 yard line! Hey, Jolly, it was cold last night. You put in the Preston on the freeze? Prestone, Prestone. Who needs Prestone? Prestone, Prestone? You need Prestone. If your antifreeze is worn out or you don't have enough, you could be in trouble. So put in a fresh fill of Prestone, too, to prevent corrosion and freeze-ups. Prestone, Prestone. We need Prestone. Prestone, Prestone. You need Prestone. Introducing the Ford in your future, the new Ford Fairmont. A new car designed for today and the years ahead. Fairmont's mileage ratings are the same as a little VW Rabbit when both are equipped with automatic transmission. And this Fairmont, as shown, is actually sticker price less than this Rabbit. Yet Fairmont has 90% of the head, leg, and shoulder room of most large cars. Fairmont, roomy but with mileage like a small car, and the lowest sticker price in its class. Test drive Fairmont, the newest, better idea from Ford. A Dallas scoring drive, you saw the stats. Pittsburgh has it first and ten, the Cowboys lead. Six to nothing as Frank O'Hara breaks into the secondary. Frank O'Hara is gone. A 
61-yard touchdown run by Franco Harris. There he is. From Rank Cocos Valley High School to Penn State. His longest run was 40 yards so far. And I'll tell you, he cuts it off in a hurry. Here it is again. Watch the body control, and let's see who gets a good block on the outside. Because he's cut off at the pass. You can see Bruni coming over. Good block inside. And I'll tell you right now, it's a race. And very few people have run through that secondary, and Franco does it. He's not a Tony Dorsett, but he's bigger. Franco Harris, number 32, and Roy Torella with Bobby Walden holding, puts Pittsburgh ahead. Franco has 90 yards on eight carries, and we've got some kind of a duel going on. Above average, I'd say. When do you say Budweiser? After doing this about 3,000 times a day, after a hard tennis match with my friend Ron. As soon as I knock this ball out of the park. When do you say Budweiser. It's everywhere. When my mother-in-law leaves town. <laughs> After a long night, you're here. Oh, when you say Budweiser. Let me hear you say it, people. Budweiser. You have said it all. Here's a few tips on how to get out of an airport fast. One, join the number one club and reserve a car with Hertz. Two, have your license and credit card ready, because Hertz will be ready for you. Just sign and go. Three, need directions? Ask Hertz. They know the shortest route. Nobody can get you out of an airport faster. Nobody can get you out of an airport faster. Go, Deuce! Go! Rent a Ford from Hertz. A superstar in rent Ride. Oh, another long night of for the old workaholic, huh? Somebody's got to get the work out. Many people drive themselves too hard. And it's putting the cost of health care under a lot of stress. Blue Cross and Blue Shield plans have programs to hold costs down. But everybody oh, needs to help. I see you working on a transfer. Huh? Yeah. There's a big office in the sky. <laughs> when you overtax yourself, we all pay for it. All of us helping each other. The story of the Pittsburgh score... A heck of a run by Franco Harris. A long drive, huh? <laughs> One play. <laughs> Jarella kicks off into the end zone to Butch Johnson. And he stays in that end zone. Franco Harris. And watch the block by the center, Webster. Now, Mike Webster's 52 there. He takes Bruning, the linebacker, who's overrunning just a little bit. Flyers on the outside. D.D. Lewis gets one shot there. Remember, this happens in a hurry. If it's holding, it's too late, baby. The replay is done. So 61 yards. Done. And done well by Franco Harris and the Pittsburgh Steelers. They lead 7-6 with 14-44 left to play before the half. The longest touchdown run by Franco Harris since 1972. The Steelers up by one. Here's Dorsett. Dorsett squirms around and gets to a three. Lauren Taves, number 51, made the tackle. Franco has 26 100-yard days already. And he is... So now he has 27. I hate to make it an obit because he's still alive and very well. <laughs> there are only three other guys who've had more 100-yard days than that. Leroy Kelly, Jim Brown, and O.J. Simpson. O.J. Simpson. So that's classic company. Aaron Kyle was hurt earlier, a head injury, and he is out. We don't know if he'll be back or not. Starbuck, Drew Pearson, couldn't hold on. And Dennis Winston popped through pretty good. Wow. Winston has certainly learned what Jack Lambert learned in a hurry, too. Watch 53 to the right of your screen now. Just follow him. Roger gets a pretty good late rush right there from Holmes. Ball is again thrown sort of heavy. Pearson has to go up and get it. He usually makes the inside catch, and I'll tell you, Winston made sure. And Drew may be hurt. I'll tell you, they're having to stand over him now. You rarely see that. Drew Pearson is some tough wide receiver, but right now he is down, and they're looking at him. 7-6 Steelers. What time you go to sleep is your business. 
What time you wake up is Panasonic's. Panasonic introduces its electronic clock radios. A gentle chirp, silent, easy to read numbers, a doze button, and of course, beautiful AM and FM. What time you wake up is... My business. Ours too. Panasonic electronic clock radios and digital clock radios. Introducing a new 1978 Ford Renata, the ESS. Can you tell it from this impressive $20,000 Mercedes 280 SE? Renata. Mercedes. Renata. Mercedes. Renata. Mercedes. The new Ford Renata ESS. See how close you can come to the look of a $20,000 Mercedes at the price of a Granada. When America needs a better idea, Ford puts it on wheels. Dallas third and six at their own 24. Pittsburgh leads 7-6. Just over 14 minutes left to play before the half. And Drew Pearson walked off under his own screen, but he was hit. In motion is Preston Pearson. Flips his arm. Graubach fires behind Jay Salvi. Jimmy Allen on the coverage. Glenn Edwards close by. Cowboys will have to punt. And the ball was thrown behind the receiver, and he was well covered at the same time. Roger has his problems right now, and the crowd loves it. They love that steel curtain defense. Sellout crowd at Pittsburgh, watching the Cowboys and the Pittsburgh Steelers. Jim Smith, number 86, that black jersey. And number 11 is Danny White, fourth of six for Dallas. Just got it away. Almost blocked by Jack Ham. It's a Cowboys roll and goes down to about the 32 where the Pittsburgh Steelers will take it over. Scott Laidlaw is number 35 for Dallas. Let's go back and see how close this came to being blocked. And Danny White has had one punt blocked already this year. So there might be the feeling they could get close. We had a problem. Danny White had a problem. Pittsburgh has the football. And the momentum, too, right now. It has swung. Franco Harris. Touchdown run with the Steelers ahead. When Roy Girella kicked the extra point, Terry Bradshaw, the quarterback for Pittsburgh. 7 6 the score, and Rocky Blyer gets the call. And Rocky Blyer. Outside the 40. Mark Washington made the tackle, but Blyer got the good yardage. And they ran straight at Randy White and the Dallas Flex defense. Some people didn't think maybe Sam Davis at left guard could block Randy White. But I'll tell you one thing, they rooted him out that time. Look at this score from the West Coast. 3-3. 49ers and Rams. And Sutton's warming up in the bullpen, huh? <laughs> Eight-yard pickup by Rocky Blyer on first down. So they got two to go for a first. Flyer again. Close. Bob Brunig. Number 53, the Dallas middle linebacker is playing with a with an injured toe. Seattle over Houston, 3-0. Houston, of course, in the AFC Central, as are the Steelers. It's conceivable we could have a four-way tie for first place. Cincinnati has won. And of course, uh, Pittsburgh needs this game, but they have won a couple of crucial games over Cleveland already. The Steelers, then. Right. Cleveland played the Giants, and the last time we looked, they were leading 21-7. to So now it is not conceivable to have a four-way tie. Sorry. They can't get there. Cincinnati beat Miami, so they're 5-5. Five and five. Houston playing later. Pittsburgh 5-4, and four, and Cleveland's record goes up to 6-4. and four. It's a cat fight. Nothing like it. First down, Steelers. Ball at their own 43-yard line. They lead by one, and Franco Harris again breaks into the second goal. Almost broke it again. Harris got a first down. Stopped by Harris. They're cutting off Jethro Pugh, and watch and see what they do to Br Bruni, the middle linebacker. Webster, they double team on the outside, and the tackle comes down, the trap from the outside. The toughest thing you can read is a linebacker. Cliff Harris has to hang on or he's gone. 
Terry Bradshaw, the man who calls the plays for the Steelers, is the quarterback. It's first down for Pittsburgh. 100 yards rushing for Franco Harris. I prematurely gave him that before the last run. No score between the Oakland Raiders and San Diego. In the second quarter. 11.54 left to play here in the second period. The Steelers lead by one. 7-6 to pitch back to Franco Harris. This time, Bruni gets out there with him. Benny Barnes helped him. You know, the biggest problem with Franco Harris is they can't keep him from being charitable. He does everything that a kid's charity wants in this town, and they have to finally take him out of the walkathons and the different things to raise money for children's hospitals and MS and all, and tell Franco, Franco, do that in the offseason, but try to get some rest. He is a dynamite guy. I mean that. And a dynamite runner as well. Two-yard pickup by Franco Harris. Second and eight situation. Line of scrimmage is the Dallas 45. 7-6 Pittsburgh. Brett shot a throw. The screen looks like it'll work. Benny Cunningham has it. Fumble! And the Steelers got it back. Flag goes down. That might have been a late hit. I believe John Stallworth is the guy who made the recovery, number 82. Well, what a great call by Bradshaw. The old screen back or screen away. Why Tittle used to run this beautifully. And it's going to be an lineman downfield. It looked like Webster, number 52, the center, might have drifted downfield on the screen. When you're eager to get down and knock somebody for the screenplay, sometimes you hedge a little bit. Let's see. I can read lips, and this is Webster. And I'll tell you, it's tough to know where the line of scrimmage is. Watch 52 now. He goes over and checks, then lets the rush come. And this is the one that Tittle used to run so well. Throw it back, and the chase is taking everybody out of the play. Now watch this 250-pound tight end take a shot here. It's Waters. No, that was Cliff Harris. You would expect that from either of them. 7-6, Pittsburgh lead. The screen is brought back. And it's second down now and 18. Bradshaw outside Stallworth. Went to his knees. And again he goes to his knees as Randy Hughes came over to make the tackle. Helped by Mike Mark Washington. I'll tell you one thing, Pittsburgh offense has a lot of different things in it. Suddenly now we've seen two screens in a row. And the big misconception on Terry Bradshaw. Somebody once said, here's a score from Atlanta now over New Orleans in the fourth period. But somebody once said that he wasn't an intelligent person and all that. And I was told by the scouting systems that gave him an IQ test that he broke the bank. So for those people that have listened to the wrong information, Bradshaw is extremely swift upstairs. Heck of an athlete to go along with that intelligence. In fact, I, had, I heard from one head coach that if he hadn't been drafted as a quarterback, he would have been drafted number one as a tight end. That's how good an athlete he is. Look out. That's Randy White. Sack number 41 for the fellows from Dallas, Texas. Boy, they do come. And when Randy White gets you in the blind side. Dallas offside. Something is wrong, we understand, with the microphone that referee Bob Frederick is wearing. That's not all bad. No. So if you can read lips as we discuss who the violation is against, welcome. We'll try with you. Defense. Oh, that's right. Side. Third down. Thank you, Bob. Somebody was offside. Each team has three penalties now. The offsides are even at two apiece. Third and seven. Ball to Dallas, 44. Randy White was the sacker on that last play. Danny White is warming up for the Cowboys behind their bench. Here's Bradshaw. Going to take off. Too tall Jones takes him down. I'm wondering about how Bradshaw takes the snap so well because that cast on his left hand is a pretty good sized cast. In the fourth quarter, Philadelphia 16, the St. Louis Cardinals 14. Ooh, the Cardinals are so swift. I bet Vermeil wishes that one was over now. Vermeil being the Philadelphia Eagle head coach. And the Eagles are starting to believe. Bobby Walden is number 39. The Cowboys faking. They're going to try to block it. And high to the 
left side. And out of bounds inside the five. Fine effort. Now he comes out exactly two to five. Bobby Walden turned those fans around from booing him to cheering him. <laughs> his, his ninth kick inside the 20, and it came at a good time. 7-6 Pittsburgh. What does it take to get a loan from your full-service banker so that you can open a small business like this? Let's ask two people who know, Bruce and Phyllis Doty. We were turned down once, Ed. But then our banker found we had experienced some collateral and a good credit rating. So you've got the loan. And now we've got three stores. That's full-service banking, making good loans, creating jobs, helping people get started. No financial institution can help you and your community more than a full-service bank. A stitch? Huh? They're stitching us into something new. Levi's new, Duraplus denim. It's a lot stronger. I know. And shrinkage? Look. Won't have to worry about that anymore. And look, our wrinkle worries are over. Smooth. And Duraplus fades with washing, just like you'd expect denim to. Gee. Levi's Duraplus denim jeans. Something new from out of the blue. I predict she's going to win. Don't miss 22 big stars competing. I wish I was a pool table. Flip Wilson hosts Celebrity Challenge of the Sexes tonight at 8, 7 Central and Mountain. I mentioned a minute ago that Danny White was warming up, but the Dallas quarterback is still Roger Starbuck. He is one for four and has not thrown the ball that well so far. He's been bothered by a bad hand and a bad hip. Robert Newhouse trying to get around to the outside and does. Newhouse cutting up field. Newhouse still on his feet out to about the 34. Stopped finally by Glenn Edwards. But much more than enough for a first down for Robert Newhouse. As you look at Tom Landry talking to Golden Richards and sending in the play. Here's Newhouse. An 18-yarder was his longest run. And that was 29. And he just went over the top. Now he gets outside of Jack Ham, and you don't see that very often. The main thing is that he's so stumpy, he's got the balance. He won't run out of bounds either. I guarantee you he'll stay in the field of play. Give credit to Butch Johnson, number 86, for a good block. Got spring him into the secondary. First and 10 as Dallas gets out of the shadow of the goal line. Leaves. First down for them. Starbuck, Billy Joe Dupree at the 50. Dupree at the 45 inside the Pittsburgh 45. Stopped by Glenn Edwards. Big BJ wide open. How, how old is that play? We were talking about it before the game that Jimmy Finks once threw one of these, the LB nickel. Uh, it's a pop pass. You fake the inside play and then dump it to the tight end. And a young middle linebacker like Winston is in the wake and chasing. It's another first down for the Cowboys at the Steeler 44. Just over eight minutes left to play before the half. First and 10, Dallas, Dorsett, and Newhouse, the running backs behind that guy. Starbuck. Accepts the fake. Drawback fires. Caught by Butch Johnson. Another Dallas first down and a heck of a catch. Dennis Winston. Denver now has taken the lead over Kansas City. 14-7, fourth quarter score. Butch Johnson doesn't get to play a lot, but I've seldom seen him when he didn't produce exactly what Landry thought he could do at that moment. He is an extremely fine football player. Today, at least, he and Golden Richards are alternating at the wide receiver spot bringing in plays from the only head coach Dallas has ever had, Tom Landry. Golden Richards and Drew Pearson come to the left side together in the formation now. It's back to Dorsett. Flag is down. They played this way for years. Good block by Donovan that time. Got Newhouse to the corner. That funny-looking defense that Pittsburgh uses sometimes has Joe Green almost on top of the defense, offensive center. Defense, number 75 offside. Love First Joe down. Green. Terry Bradshaw looking on. I'll tell you one thing. He takes the bad with the good. He wears extremely well this man. Burton Wallace is number 66. 
Roger Staubach at first at number 12. So it's set in motion. And back to the end. Not much doing there. Lauren Taves is number 51. Number 53 is Dennis Winston. Taves comes up and does exactly what you want the linebacker to do. Make sure it's sealed off inside. Here you can see Lawless trying to get outside. Taves, very strong upper body strength. And all he's trying to do is play as good a right, right linebacking job as he can. He looks like he's a pretty good football player to me. Baltimore 26. The Jets 12. Fourth quarter score in Baltimore. Second down here. Pittsburgh leads Dallas 7-6. And back to North set. Breaks a couple. Got close to first down yardage. Jack Ham is number 59 who finally made the tackle on TD. He's always full length forward when the darn play is over. Dorsett's reaching up with the ball going for more. Looks like he's about a yard shy of a first down so it'll be third and out goes Newhouse and in comes Preston Pearson to join Dorsett. Now the running back and now here comes Newhouse back. Mr. Landry changed his mind. You see the tight formation with sort of the short punt type thing with three backs close, maybe. Huh? That's right. Drew Pearson goes out. So it's Dorset. Preston Pearson and Newhouse behind Starbuck. <laughs> Dorset and Roger Starbuck is going for Jay Salvin. He's got it. Dallas touchdown. Oh, what a call. Did that come from Irma Allen upstairs? I don't know. It was a great call. I followed Newhouse to see if he could block. I followed Dorsett and thought, my gosh, he didn't get the first down. And Roger came out throwing. That call from the bench. Don't forget that. Fitzgerald and company go to work. Rafferty's got Mean Joe Green off, and everybody's going for Dorsett. I would have. In fact, I did. Look at this throw. He doesn't have to be artistic. Sally's not going to drop it, is he? I'd like to welcome Philadelphia and St. Louis audience. The Cardinals beat the Eagles 21 to 16. And those of you who watched that, welcome to this. Pat Summerall with Tom Brookshire. The score here is Dallas 13, Pittsburgh 7. And we have five minutes and 26 seconds left to go before the half. This year, when you step out on the town, don't just drive. Take off in the 1978 Thunderbird with its distinctive look and size, its Thunderbird quality and comfort, and it comes at a down-to-earth price of 5808 with automatic transmission, power steering, power brakes, V8, and more. Flight test the 1978 Thunderbird. When America needs a better idea, Ford puts it on wheels. Tubor Gold, the golden beer of Danish kings by appointment to the Royal Danish Court. Tubor Gold. Only centuries of the Danish brewer's art could achieve its noble character for lightness and flavor. Tubor Gold, now brewed in America. So, for about what you pay for the King of Beers, you can now have Tubor Gold, the golden beer of Danish kings. The Dallas scoring drive five plays, 95 yards. Robert Newhouse had a 29-yard run to start it off and a touchdown pass from Staubach to Salvi. That's Alvin Maxim, number 28. And he breaks around it to him. Herrera misses it. Maxim goes. Randy Hughes finally caught him. But Pittsburgh has it back in good shape. And the Cowboys seem to think that they can cover kickoffs as well as anybody, and they have it today. Pittsburgh is really using the run back to get to field position. Here's the former New Orleans Saints running back, and he's a solid guy. Now watch him get up in and duck it outside. Efren gives it the best shot he can, and now Hughes pulls him down from behind. You can't relax against any team, but particularly a good team like Pittsburgh. Steeler first down with five minutes, 14 seconds left to play before the half. Franco Harris ducks under a couple. Jeff Thoreau Pugh is number 75. The George Burns one-man show. And only the slide George Burns could do it. 
And Margaret's going to help him, too, huh? Pretty good help. That's it. He'll also have Gladys Knight and the Pips, the captain and Tennille, and a special friend named Bob Hope. Sort of misleading, isn't it? George Burns is worth the price of admission all by himself. And other folks are pretty good, too. Second and seven. Rocky Blyer stays back to block. Lynn Swan accepts the pass from Terry Bradshaw. I beg your pardon, John Stallworth, not Lynn Swan. Mark Washington on the coverage. Boy, this young man had two TD passes last week against Cleveland. Now watch him. He goes down and sets it up, drives Washington off, and turns him all the way around, really. Ball is perfectly thrown because he had to come back to get it. You're never going to break that one up, not if you're wise. Never covered. New Orleans has taken the lead over Atlanta. 21-20, fourth quarter score. First down here, 13-7 down. Bradshaw's going to throw again. Look at the swan. He's in the corner. He's going to be out of the end zone if he catches it. That he is. Benny Barnes on the coverage. I'll tell you, that track is rough stuff. That sort of beat up, chopped up clay, and it is not a soft composition. And Lynn Swan went for it and made the catch, and he's got to be shaken up. That's the baseball warning track so that the outfielders will know when they're close to that fence and Lynn Swan and his desire to catch that football is still down. You know what an asphalt pizza burn is if you fall down on it? That's just what Lynn Swan received. He hit that fence pretty hard. I'll never forget his Super Bowl, his MVP Super Bowl two years ago. That was one of the great exhibitions of in sports in a long time. There were two catches in that game that nobody, I think, who ever saw it will ever forget. Look at this. This one doesn't count, but he went and drove right on through and made the catch. A lot of receivers would have said, eh, I'll wait for the next one. He didn't hit the wall at hard, but he did about a 15-yard skid out of the end zone across that clay track. Up now. He only weighs 174 pounds, and you get all of it from Lynn Swan, I'll tell you. Every pound. Here's what happened to the line of scrimmage. Harvey Martin now against Powell. And I'll tell you, that is some kind of a battle going on. Now he's picked up and double to make sure. And they all watch. Here comes Swan, and that, of course, is Chuck Noll greeting him on the sideline. The Rams now over the 49ers, 10 to 3 in the second quarter. Second down and 10 for Pittsburgh. The bottom line is finished the Dallas. 32 is Bradshaw gives on the draw play to Frank O'Hara. This time he is wrapped up by Harvey Martin. Who read it well. All right, in the flex defense, Harvey Martin goes outside, and he's still so darn quick. He gets back through the block of Cole, who had a good one and knocks Franco down. You know who's doing a good job on offense is the offensive tackle, Larry Brown, who used to be the tight end. You see in the left side of your huddler, number 79. He's now right in there in the trench. He used to be 220, now he's 250. He should be in the trench. Three minutes and 50 seconds left before the half. Dallas. made the tackle. Dallas had a blitz going. But Bradshaw and the Steelers read it well. The third, the third completion by Bradshaw. Watch how he takes a little off. Good quarterbacks can do this. He's got a six foot five, 250 pound tight end that's just open enough. It's an excellent throw and a big target. Super throw. He had to throw it like that to get it over Charlie Waters. If he had thrown it on the line, he would have knocked it down. Benny Cunningham. That's why Larry Brown is the tight end now. Because of the abilities of number 89, Biddy Cunningham. First down, Steelers. At the nine, it's first and goal. Bradshaw's going to throw again. And does. Going to have a touchdown. pretty well tells the story, doesn't it? Bradshaw, not only happy, but on target. Look at that cast on his left arm. He's played with this, this this sixth game. Good fake here. Barnes is never in the chase on this one. There's the throw, taken off again. Aha! Inside the field of play this time. Lynn Swan. The experts 
who pick odds in games like this and establish Pittsburgh as a one-point favorite. The score is 14-13. Boy, they're accurate, aren't they? Some people you'd expect to know a lot about football don't know a lot. <laughs> and some people do know a lot. This is what the game is all about, though. Lynn Swan is back over there, by, right by the, the liquid containers. He falls into the track, goes into the wall, gets the abrasions, and comes back and gets the TD pass. Those are the ones you appreciate. Terry Bradshaw so far today is four out of eight. One touchdown pass you just saw him throw to Lynn Swan. Total yards are 48, but Pittsburgh has the lead. 14-13. You know, that Cowboy defense has only been allowed like 36% of the passes to be completed. Uh, Bradshaw's doing a job. 33-12, final score. Burt Jones and group continue to roll for Baltimore. Does that make their 9-1? and one? Yeah, they're looking for big things in January. Aren't we all? We are. The biggest thing is the Super Bowl, and you'll see that here on CBS. Larry Brinson with the football. Brinson stumbles out to about the 25. Kept his balance for about eight extra yards. Now the pitch of the game has gone up. And until they go in at halftime, you're going to see probably some late hitting. You're going to see a lot of extracurricular stuff. Both teams are getting a little bit abrasive right now. New Orleans defeated Atlanta 21 to 20. And those of you who watched that upset, Welcome to this broadcast. Pat Summerall with Tom Brookshire at Three Rivers Stadium in Pittsburgh, where the score here is Pittsburgh 14, Dallas 13. And we have two minutes and 40 seconds left to play before the half. Salvi comes in motion. Staubach throws back to Dorsett. Flag goes down as Dorsett breaks into the secondary and picks up about six. They're going to call a crackback lock on the man in motion for Dallas on Jack Ham, the linebacker. I believe he came back and... Hit him a shot in the back. Dwight White applauding the men in the striped shirts. <laughs> you don't see that too often, no. do you? <laughs> Atlanta's record now, by the way, after that loss to New Orleans is five and five. The Saints go to three and seven. Take him back. I don't think they crack back and clip Jack Ham. I think they just tried to tackle him. Both are illegal. Fun, but illegal. Bob Frederick goes back in the other direction. Offensive holding, number 86, first down. Instead of cracking back, it's holding down. Put the clamps on. And now they'd like to force Roger to go upstairs with something he doesn't want to do. Maybe he doesn't want to throw it real quickly. On first and 20, he throws outside the door set and look out. Can be dangerous, this fellow. Mel Blunt finally tackled him, but they almost got the first down. The scary thing is, it looked like the Pittsburgh defense was in pretty good shape till he caught the ball. And then everything seems to open up. He was really looking forward to this game and to his first start of this year, of course. So many fans and so many friends in this area from his collegiate days and from his high school days nearby. He asked for a hundred extra tickets. <laughs> I don't know if he got them all. He can afford to pay the scalper for him, I'll tell you. He's got a little <laughs> bit of money in the bank. Gave up a lot for him. And then they gave him a lot, too. You know, people said that when they saw him at, at Hopewell High, that he, you could see then that this was going to be one of the great ones. It just didn't happen overnight. He had it. Those people were right. He got a first down. Ball at the 36-yard line for the Cowboys. Two minutes, seven seconds left to play. One more play before the two-minute warning. Set gets the call again and again. He got about eight. Ernie Holmes made the tackle. A blocked extra point. That's the difference. 14. Boom, boom. 14, 13 to score. A minute 59 left to play before the half. The Steelers up by one. Wherever you may roam, you'll find our name is known. You can trust me. We try to Davis. Davis, Davis. 
Stay with us at halftime as we'll update all the scores and highlights from around the league. Have a special report on that historic meeting in the Mideast between the Israelis and the Arabs, Fagan and Sadat. And one heck of a football game going on right here at Three Rivers Stadium. Tom Brookshire and Pat Summerall. Score is 14-13. Pittsburgh leads Dallas. Second and three situations in the shotgun. The protection is good, and Dorsett has it. Oh! And he is hot hard by Winston. The ball went loose. And let's see what they rule. I think the reception will stand, but that was a fumble. And I'll tell you, Winston can move and hit at the end of it. He has destroyed the, a couple of Cowboy receivers already. Dorsett now is checking to see who it was that ran over him. It was 5-3. You could see Dorsett aware very much of the fact that dirt was coming. And he tried to duck under and just barely did not. Third down shotgun situation. Outside Preston Pearson. Got the first down and more. Out of bounds at the 45 in Pittsburgh territory. Dwight White made the tackle. He's a hometown boy coming back too. Not only did he play with the Steelers, but he lives around here. He might have a couple of hundred tickets. <laughs> Preston Pearson and Tony Dorsett have been battling all year for the starting position that halfback in that Cowboy offensive unit. And until today, it had been Pearson. Today, Dorsett. Tom Landry has Butch Johnson, Roger Staubach, Golden Richards gathered around. The Chicago Bears against the Detroit Lions on Thanksgiving Day, 12 o'clock noon Eastern time here on CBS. We'll be there. Turkey in Detroit. What kind of turkey do you prefer? I'll bring a bird with me. Okay. Can I answer later? Roger is 10 for 13 for 113 yards and the surprise TD to Saudi. On Walter Payton, of course, you'll see in that game at the Silver Dome in Detroit or Pontiac. Walter Payton, in case you might not know, carried the ball 40 times today for the Chicago Bears as they beat Minnesota and picked up 275 yards. I haven't had a chance to see him work. That's going to be an experience. We're looking at a great guy work today. More than one, really. Franco Harris, Tony Dorsett, Rocky Blyer. Newhouse has been good. First down, Dallas. Starbuck operating from the deep spot. Ducking. And down he goes. Back at his own 45. Steve Furness, Dwight White. And I mean a tough sack, a physical sack, because Roger did not want to go down and lose too much. The Cowboys are thinking at least three. Now watch this. Watch the left of your screen as Mean Joe Green goes to the outside and Furness gets to the inside. And Donovan loses him, and that is a tough physical sack. That's a mugging. Again, the shotgun by Dallas. This time he has time. And outside, Preston Pearson. He got out of bounds. Jack Ham was the closest stealer. He didn't get much. But the clock is stopped with a minute and three seconds left to play. 14-13. Pittsburgh over Dallas. And if Dorsett is in the game now, you might as well get him out of the backfield and into the pass pattern. Because you don't want him having to step up and, and block one of those defensive linemen that gets away. That could shorten a career by about four years. A minute, three seconds left before the half. Dallas with three timeouts remaining and Pittsburgh has the same number. 14-13, the Steelers over the Cowboys. First time they've met in regular season since Super Bowl number 10. Starbuck operates in the shotgun again on third down. Fires down the middle for Drew Pearson. And Drew Pearson is top. Woo. Edwards really hit him a shot. J.T. Thomas was made the coverage. Drew coming across the middle and watch him take this blow to the head. And I love the Steelers' defense because they don't go into a prevent. They play you tough on the line of scrimmage. And the secondary plays you man-to-man. -man. There's the free one right after he missed the ball. So the Cowboys now put in their punting unit. And back for Pittsburgh goes Jim Smith. 
Don't forget now, Danny White is a quarterback. So the possibility of a pass always remains. A high angling kick, trying to get it out of bounds. And Danny White does, so Pittsburgh will take over. Sixteen yard line. Starbucks had one of his greatest days, and yet this team trails by a point. He's 11 for 15 for 118 and a touchdown, and they're shy of one. That blocked extra point by Dennis Winston makes the score 14 13 as Roy Girella has hit both of his. That's Bill Gregory. Good pass rusher. That's why he's there. That's what Dallas is figuring right now that the Steelers will try to throw. The draw to Franco Harris, it's a tough play now. Just give it to Franco Harris, it's a tough play. Harvey Martin, Bill Gregory. Okay, I'd like to be staring across the line of scrimmage at Harvey all day. There he is. I think I'd rather be someplace else. He can play Jimmy Withers stuff in the morning, but he's not going to fool me. I'm not going to play on Sunday afternoon with him, I tell you that. John Cole has that job. <laughs> with 15 seconds now and the clock running. Larry Bradshaw gives to Franco. Franco bangs into Thomas Henderson. And Aaron Kyle. Good to see him back. Last play of half number one. Pittsburgh crosses the Dallas unit as both head for their locker room. The Steelers go there with a one-point lead over the Cowboys. Schlitz Light. Schlitz Light beer has a third fewer calories than our other fine beer, and all the taste beer drinkers expect from Schlitz. Is that what the gentleman always orders? That's his beer, the only light beer with gusto. We'll have two Schlitz lights. Beer drinkers know it took Schlitz to bring the taste to light. Years ahead, at 33 miles per gallon highway, 23 city, Fairmont has the highest mileage ratings in its class. Yet it has 90% of the head, leg, and shoulder room of most large cars. And base sticker prices for the Fairmont line start at just $35.89. Fairmont, roomy but with mileage like a small car, and the lowest sticker price in its class. Test drive Fairmont, the newest, better idea from Ford. The George Burns One Man Show, with a little help from Ann Margaret, Gladys Knight and the Pips, Bob Hope and the Captain and Tennille. At my age, they don't think I can last an hour. I'll last. I might even lap over into the next program. This isn't really a nurse. I promise to put her on television. Wednesday at 10, 9 Central and Mountain. Tonight, CBS Sports presents Celebrity Challenge of the Sexes with Farrah Fawcett Majors and many more television and movie stars competing in exciting head-to-head -head competition. I'm ready. Ready? Okay. I don't forget, just let them have it. Here we go, $20 on the nose. Come on, baby. That's Celebrity Challenge of the Sexes tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern. It was late in the fourth quarter in Chicago's Soldier Field. For the afternoon, Walter Payton had gained 217 yards on 37 carries. Bob Avellini bent down in the huddle and called 34's number again. Got a block, jumped over a would-be tackler, broke loose down the right sideline, and before he was stopped, he had gained 58 yards, and suddenly O.J. Simpson's record was in jeopardy. And on this play... Walter Payton made it 275 yards in a single game, a new record. Now, for a single season, the record, of course, is held by the Juice, and O.J.'s one-year mark, 2003, is in jeopardy. After 10 games, Walter Payton leads Simpson. If you compare Simpson's record-breaking year with this season by Payton, who still has four games to go, including Thursday's game on CBS Chicago and Detroit. Irv Cross, how about Cleveland and the New York Giants? We didn't have anybody running like that, but it was a pretty exciting game, though, Brent. The Cleveland Browns came into the Meadowlands and defeated the Giants by a score of 21-7, to and they did it in typical Cleveland fashion. Good overall, solid uh, defensive play, but right here in this sequence of play, Coleman hunts 
down to Bobby Hammond. Bobby Hammond, by the way, had a tremendous day, Brent Phillips. Here he makes a nifty return down to the 45-yard line, and Goldstein uh, goes right back to Hammond on the screen play. This is the best play of the day by far, but the Giants won't get a touchdown out of this because an offensive holding penalty was called on right guard John Hicks, number 74. Bobby Hammond goes in thinking he does have a score, but the play was nullified because of the holding penalty, but we thought you ought to see it anyway. But Dr. David Mays here at quarterback, uh, substituting for Brian Seif, goes to the air and hits Paul Warfield on the baseline. That was it, and that's all it took. Cleveland 21, the Giants 7. Beautiful catch by Warfield, too. Herb. Four games in progress. Let's update those scores right now. Los Angeles leading San Francisco by seven points at the half. The game you're watching is a dandy, 14-13. Cowboys miss an extra point. Houston has now come back to score the last 10 points. They're ahead of Seattle, 10-3. Oakland, San Diego, the story there is that Ken Stabler's been injured. Mike Gray is in, and the Raiders cling to a one-point lead. And Irv and Phyllis, we're going to be right back after the CBS News special report. This is a CBS News special report. Sadat in Israel. Sponsored on a continuing basis by the makers of Herbal Tegrin Shampoo. This is Bob Schieffer, CBS News. For Anwar Sadat, this extraordinary day began at the Al-Aqsa Mosque in Old Jerusalem, one of the Islamic faith's most sacred sites. Sadat was the first Arab leader to worship here since Israel took over the area after the 1967 war. He appeared lost in his thoughts as he prayed for 45 minutes, clutching his prayer beads. He spoke only in unison with the other worshippers. Outside, Israeli security forces tightened their guard as Sadat moved through the old city and past the Mosque of the Golden Dome. There were crowds wherever Sadat went, but the police became uneasy when a large crowd began to gather just outside the walled city, chanting slogans both for and against the Sadat visit. As the crowds grew more vocal, Israeli soldiers barred the gates to the old city and reinforced the guard, but there were no serious incidents. He concluded his tour of the old city with a visit to one of Christendom's most sacred places, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, revered as the place where Christ was buried. There was almost a festive air as the walking tour of the old city continued. Throughout the stroll, Sadat seemed composed and in good spirits in spite of the crowds that pressed in around him and those who were permitted near him seemed genuinely happy that he had come there. A bit later, the mood was more somber as Israeli Prime Minister Menachem Begin took Sadat to Yas Vashem, the memorial to European Jews who were murdered by the Nazis during World War II. Begin led the Egyptian president down the steps and through the black marble corridors of the shrine, which is known in Israel as the memorial to the Holocaust. Along the way, Israeli officials produced yarmulkes, which are traditionally worn in sacred Jewish places. Sadat at first appeared to accept the skull cap, then politely declined. The purpose of the tour seemed to be to dramatize for Sadat just how difficult the Israeli struggle to establish a homeland has been. Sadat left a message in the guest book saying, May God guide our steps toward peace. Let us end all suffering for mankind. But perhaps the day's most dramatic moment was at the Knesset building, the home of the Israeli parliament where an Egyptian flag was raised to fly beside the Star of David. It was here at the Knesset that Sadat and Begin would make their historic addresses before the parliament in a packed gallery that included a visiting American congressional delegation. Sadat in his speech was cordial but firm. Begin was just as firm but held out hope for an eventual agreement. In the past, we had our reasons for this, yes? We refused to meet with you anywhere. Yes, we used to describe you as the so-called Israel. But I tell you today, and I declare to the world at large, that we accept to live with you within a just and lasting peace. We do not want to surround you or that you surround us with rockets aimed at destruction or the missiles of prejudice and hatred. I declared on numerous occasions that Israel has become a reality. I suggest that everything will be negotiable 
the one that says in the relation between the relations between Israel and the Arab states that there are things that should be taken out of negotiation takes upon himself a great responsibility everything is open for negotiations the members of the Knesset reacted to the Sadat speech with courtesy and what seemed to be curiosity back in the United States President Carter paused on his way home from church where he had prayed for the success of the Sadat visit President Sadat would be courageous enough to go to Israel will transform, I think, the, uh, the Middle Eastern uh, peace prospects, regardless of the outcome of this particular visit. It's a breakdown in, in 30 years, perhaps even centuries, of uh, hatred. And I was particularly touched yesterday when uh, President uh, Sadat walked down the uh, red welcoming uh, carpet and shook hands with uh, Mr. Diane and, and uh, he and Mrs. Mayer changed, exchanged uh, a friendship and he bent and kissed her on the cheek. I thought that was a, a great uh, occasion. I think it will be a major step forward. Sadat and Begin met again tonight at a working dinner. More details on that this evening on the CBS News broadcast 60 Minutes. This is Bob Schieffer in New York. Now we rejoin the NFL on CBS. Okay, thank you, Bob. And Phyllis, the report out on the West Coast is that Ken Stabler's knee injury is not serious. They are now at the half, and the Oakland Raiders lead the San Diego Chargers 7-6. Phyllis, you've got a reminder about a special program tonight. I certainly do. You were there, I was there, and it all happens tonight right here on CBS. Farrah Fawcett Majors against Dick Van Patten in tennis, Olympic decathlon champ Bruce Jenner against little Chrissy McNichol in skateboarding. And I understand that's really a highlight in the show. They're both terrific athletes. You'll see those and many other top stars tonight at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time, when CBS Sports presents Celebrity Challenge of the Sexes. That's tonight, right here at 8 o'clock on CBS. And Phyllis, the men's team's heavily favored. Oh, no, the not. NFL today will continue on CBS after these messages from your local stations. Join top Hollywood stars for the AFI salute to the greatest movies of all time, tomorrow night on CBS. In a moment, we're going to see some youngsters who might be the pro players of tomorrow. But first, let's see how some of today's pro players got their start. Hi, I'm Mike Kirkland, and I'm a quarterback with the Baltimore Colts. That's Randy Burke. He's with the Colts, too. Football is our business, a business of punting, passing, and kicking. But it was a game with us first. It was a game when I was national punt pass and kick champion from Texas. That's me. We got our names in the Pro Football Hall of Fame, too. The Ford Dealers of America have... Watch it! The Ford Dealers of America have made punt, pass, and kick a football skills game for over one million boys and girls every year for the past 16 years. That's over 16 million young men and women between the ages of 8 and 13 who entered the competition through their local dealer. These kids compete for trophies, travel, and I guess, like me, just for fun. They participate because PP&K is fun, exciting, and some kids win it all. Ladies and gentlemen, these youngsters have already competed in the kicking and punting events. Now they'll compete to see who can pass the fathers and most accurately. Their scores will be totaled. We'll see the winners later on. And now, if the officials on the field are ready, let's go to the action. Our first eight-year-old passer is from Freeport, Pennsylvania. He is Jeff Christie. Go, Jeff. The next eight-year-old passer from Blairsville, Pennsylvania, is Mark Franklin. Good luck. And now we move to the nine-year-olds. From Julian, Pennsylvania, 
Greg Snowberger. The other nine-year-old contestant from Pittsburgh, George Cupitz. Good throw. And now we move to the 10-year-old contestants from Toronto, Ohio, Donald Raymer, Jr., number 53. Fine throw. And from State College, Pennsylvania, Philip Willenbrock, number 48. And now we move to the 11-year-olds from Salzburg, Pennsylvania, Harry Buell III, number 78. And from Bedford, Pennsylvania, Robert Doman. And out of the 12 year olds from Washington, Pennsylvania, Randy Ahrens, number 82. Good arm. And from Elkins, West Virginia, Scott Hopwood. Wow. And finally, our 13-year-olds from Fairmont, West Virginia, Michael Biafor. And finally, from Pittsburgh, number 72, Patrick Reed. And there you are, ladies and gentlemen. Now the officials will add up the points, double-check measurements, and determine the six Pittsburgh area competition winners. We'll announce their eight names at the end of the third quarter. So right now, give these youngsters an encouraging round of applause. And thank you. We're at the half of the contest between the Dallas Cowboys and the Pittsburgh Steelers. And right now, Pittsburgh is on top, 14-13. Leslie Caron for Color Track by RCA. In Gigi, my brooch was blue, the leaves were green, and my gown was lavender lace. If these colors don't look right to you, you should know about Color Track from RCA. Getting the color right is what Color Track is all about. It actually adjusts the colors and locks them on track. Before you see the color, the color track system grabs it, aligns it, defines it, sharpens it, tones it, and locks the color on track. RCA is making television better and better. The preceding announcement was brought to you as a public service by the National Football League. The National Football League is furnishing us with one heck of a contest. And not a bad view either. The central casting must have brought in that moon. I looked at the clock thinking maybe we'd overslept. It is some kind of a scene for a football game, isn't it? I'll say. First half stats are wild. Bradshaw's been completely in control. But look at the rushing yardage, thanks to Franco's 61 yarder, 127 yards for Pittsburgh, and Dallas only gives up the average of about 114 over four quarters. He's been careful. The only turnover was that the one fumble by Franco Harris, and obviously he atoned for that. But that's been the big bugaboo with Pittsburgh. Just don't give it away. They play tough. Roger Staubach, 11 out of 15. Bradshaw, 4 out of 8. And neither team is grim about it. They're just going out and locking on the hat and going to work again. I really like this kind of a football game, Patrick. You have to. You have to like the way he's played, too. And again, that left wrist in a cast. Terry Bradshaw been playing with that fractured left wrist for the last two, three weeks. Butch Johnson, Larry Brinson. There's the cast on the left hand. The deep men, Larry Brinson, number 36. And number 86, Butch Johnson. Johnson on the right, Brinson on the left. 
Roy Torella. The Pittsburgh kickoff man. 14-13 Steelers with a half to go. Torella's going to ten. It is going to be Butch Johnson. Five, Butch goes straight ahead. Butch outside the 30, a good strong run back. It'll be first down Dallas at their own 32, stopped by Glenn Edwards. Mrs. Bradshaw has stopped by the booth. Perhaps you know her by another name, JoJo Starbuck. Ice capades. She's really happy about her husband's work today, too, you know. Like all lovely ladies, you like to see their men do well. I know he's happy she belongs to him. Better believe it. We said he was intelligent, didn't we? <laughs> First and ten, Dallas. Jay Salvi sets up on the left side. Picks it back to Tony Garcet. Looked like he might option for a moment. But he didn't. Mel Blunt, number 47, came up to make the tackle. There is Mrs. Bradshaw. Hi, Gogo. She turned commentator. Show we're going to have on CBS, huh? She's going to be working for us on Super Skates. She is a Super Skate. January the 21st, that'll be on. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Look forward to your comments and look forward to your work. Thank you. About a yard for Dorsett, and that's all. Second and nine will make it to Dallas. Billy Joe Dupree, the handoff to Newhouse, who finally gets through and gets a Dallas first down. He doesn't need much. Newhouse about 210 and 5 what, 6'7", something like that? Uh, I would say he's about 5'7". He came in the league at 5'10". <laughs> Tell you one thing, Fitzgerald and Lawless really did a real good scissor block that time. But nothing comes easy against Pittsburgh. They keep beating on your back. Ball at the 48. Uh, Dallas first down that run by Newhouse. The Steelers lead 14-13. Little Joe Dupree closest to you now goes in motion. The handoff. Newhouse was wrapped up as soon as he got the handoff by Joe Green and Dennis Winston. It's the first time I've seen Newhouse ever really go down on his tracks. And the reason was number 75 was, <laughs> was clutching at him. In the event you might have joined us late, Jack Lambert is not playing. His place in the middle is being taken by number 53, Dennis Winston, a rookie. There he is. And that, of course, is the other guy who made the tackle number 75. He's so very familiar. The leader, Joe Green. Roger Staubach on second down. Drop. Fire. Caught. Billy Joe Dupree with the sure hands made the catch. Glenn Edwards made the tackle. And it's going to be close enough for them to measure. I'm telling you, it took a good set of hands. This ball is thrown low, and Dupree has to come back for it, and Edwards is really right on his numbers. Look at this catch. That's how close the game is. Every play uh, could be this way or that way. A blocked extra point is the difference right now. Winston blocked a friend Herrera's try after the first touchdown and it made it six to nothing Dallas Frank O'Harris came sprinting back first and ten Dallas to Pittsburgh 42 Frank O'Harris went 61 yards on his touchdown run Dallas scored again on a pass from Staubach to Jay Salvi and the Steelers then roared right back and scored on a touchdown pass from Bradshaw to Lynn Swan 14-13 tell you Neely's been doing a good job on White White, I'll tell you that. We haven't seen a lot of him yet. Dorset dropped it. I believe Dallas recovered. Dorset was looking upfield before he had it. He recovered it. It's a good idea, but it's hard to take care of the ball. Rams in control out there in the third period now. It looks like their defense is playing the way the Ram defenses uh, usually play, huh? 17 3, they lead the 49ers. The Niners had won four in a row to improve their record to four and five. The Rams went into it six and three. Oh, we got a crossing pattern made it. Newhouse shifts, second down. 
Sox twirl. Ball high in the air and nobody can get to it. Staubach under a heavy rush. The pass was intended for Billy Joe Dupree. Well, Edwards broke it up. And I mean Edwards broke it up. We saw before when the receiver just did make the catch. Now watch what happens this time. This time Edwards goes through the numbers. Oh boy, do you like to coach this. Take the big guy and wring his neck. You might recall Edwards had the big interception in the Super Bowl 10 down in Miami that day, didn't he, for Pittsburgh? Well, the last play of the game. He was in doubt that long. He left town for a few days. He looks like he's playing pretty well again. <laughs> he's back. Third and 12. Intended for somebody, but I'm not sure. I think it was Preston Pearson that was checking out. And it looked to me like Roger really tried to aim that one that time. He didn't cut it loose. That was Drew, you saw, but it's Preston Pearson that's just running about a 10-yard stop and turn out right here. Intended receiver nowhere to be found. Jim Smith way back deep for the Steelers and number 11 for Dallas, Danny White. High kick off the side of his foot. It was out of bounds, way outside the 10. Not one of his better efforts. They mark it at 16. So Pittsburgh's offensive unit gets its first crack in the second half. The Steers lead the Dallas Cowboys 14-13. Could you hold it for me? I get paid Friday. I'm sorry. This is a Christmas special. Oh, uh, how about a deposit? Um, uh, do you take postage stamps? <laughs> you take master charge, don't you? Master charge? Of course. You've just seen Clout in action. Clout is your master charge card. Your personal account for Christmas shopping in over two million places. Carry Clout and relax. Oh, boy, do I need one of those. I'm yours. I don't go with Mary Willen. What are you doing? You're not Granada. Granada? This is my Mercedes. Who tied tin cans to my Cadillac? Cadillac, that's the Granada. Alone at last, beloved. Beloved? Where's my bride? You got that Mercedes with another man. Another man? The new Ford Granada. One way to tell it from Cadillac or Mercedes is its sticker price. When America needs a better idea, Ford puts it on wheels. 11 minutes, 18 seconds left to play third quarter. First and 10, Pittsburgh. Ball thrown, 16. Frank O'Hara's hit by Jethro Pugh almost as soon as he got the handoff from Bradshaw. Dee Dee Lewis helped him out. Looking right by Jack Ham there. Look at the Penn Stater watching the game just like he's got an ice cream cone or something. These are final scores. The Bears behind Walter Payton's 275 yards rushing. Beat Minnesota 10-7. Detroit 16-7 over Tampa Bay. It's 24 in a row for them, Tampa Bay. Cleveland 21-7. Cincinnati upset Miami 23-17. Bradshaw drops the throw. Good time. Swan. Benny Barnes back with him. Looks like Dallas is come out defensively now to take over the line of scrimmage. Uh, Jeff Thoreau-Pugh got the good at penetration, and that time they put a pretty good rush on. New England 20, Buffalo 7. Final. That also a final. New Orleans beat Atlanta 21 to 20. Oh, that's the most points the Falcons have given up in the century. St. Louis came back to defeat Philadelphia 21 to 16. The Eagles had led that game for a long time. Denver finally beat Kansas City 14 to 7. And Baltimore continues to roll 33 to 12 over the New York Jets. Third down now and 10 for Pittsburgh. Still back at their own 16-yard line. Franco Harris and Rocky Blyer. Back behind Bradshaw. Draw play, Blyer. Harvey Martin from behind. And we'll look at Bobby Walden. Come on, number 39. Randy Grossman, the backup tight end for Pittsburgh. With the great hands, but can't get in the game to get his hands on it these days. He's a very fine receiver. 
plays behind Benny Cunningham, scored a touchdown in the Super Bowl two years ago against Dallas. And here is Bobby Walden with Butch Johnson standing back at the 40. Are they coming? They're coming. They are. Didn't hit him. Butch goes over and tries to hit out to be for Bobby Walton all the way down to the 15 yard line it hit the artificial turf and away it went a 65 yard punt and Waters almost blocked it he just turned off the foot at the last moment that of course the disadvantage of having only one safety man back there he can't cover the whole field Road Talker. Eight, seven Central and Mountain Time. First down, Dallas Cowboys after a tremendous punt by Bobby Walden. Cowboy ball at their own 15, 14, 13 Pittsburgh lead. And off Dorsett. Three or four. Both teams have told their defenses, we need you. We need you more than we've ever needed you. You got to squeeze them and make them cough it up. And Dorsett that time looked like he was going to pop through the hole and it closed up. Ernie Holmes had him and end of saga. Dwight White help. Think Roger will throw this time? No. You? I don't know. He's going to have a few people hang around him if he does. I'll tell you that. No shotgun. Five or six to go. Drew Pearson broke it to the outside where he was covered by Mel Blunt. Roger thought he might be going deep. He didn't. And so it fell harmlessly. Blunt might be one of the great cornerbacks to ever play this game. Hey, San Diego up over Oakland. Stabler was hurt and is back in the game though now. 9-7, that score. That on the West Coast and running about the same time as this. There's Mel Blunt, who had some contract difficulties, did not play at all during training camp periods. <laughs> we missed 59 days of training camp. That's not too bad. <laughs> That's pretty good, in fact. That's right. If you can get away with it. Dorsett and Pearson are the two backs in the backfield now. As Roger saw about those of the shotgun, he throws the contender for Preston Pearson. <laughs> and Blunt and Tate were all over him. Danny White will be back again to punt for Dallas. And the defense gets the standing ovation from the sellout crowd at Three Rivers. And Bobby Walden's punt is going to be a big factor in this entire period. But from the shotgun now, the short out, and Taves is over there with Blunt. And I said the defenses are turning on. Watch this play. That's action. Ball fell down on the back, actually, of Pearson. Blunt might have had a chance to intercept it. Danny White gets off a shot. Jim Smith goes back and tries to field it, but it goes out of bounds at the 38-yard line where the Steelers' offensive unit comes sprinting onto the field. Steelers got the best of that punting exchange by far. Let's watch that line of scrimmage coming up, Pat. It's going to be pretty vicious, this series. That's what's going to settle it. We've got eight minutes and 58 seconds left to play in the third quarter. Energy for a strong America. It starts here on the North Slope, the incredible 800-mile Trans-Alaska Pipeline. Now that it's completed, the oil it carries will reduce the payments America makes for foreign oil by billions of dollars each year. And each tanker of North Slope oil leaving Valdez Harbor carries a vital new source of energy for a strong America. Meet my new friend, the Naroka Brewmeister. No. He'll tell you how the Naroka Dollar Brew helps save coffee. With today's coffee prices, why make a full pot when you only want a few cups, huh? With my brewmizer, you can make just the number you want. And still dial perfect coffee every time. Light, medium, dark. Good. Pay less, pay more. You can't buy a finer coffee maker than the Ralco. Or one that will save you more coffee. Believe him. Believe him. <laughs>
Steeler first down at their own 38. 58 left to play third quarter. Pat Summerall with Tom Brookshire. First and 10. Terry Bradshaw, the Steeler quarterback. To Franco Harris. He tries to cut back. Finally does and picks up about six. Maybe more. Didi Lewis played it as well as you could play it, but Franco's always had that ability to look reluctant, like, eh, I'm not in too big a hurry, the play's gone anyway. Watch it, watch Didi get to the outside, cuts him back, Blyer stays with it, by the way, which he always does. And now he puts it down and gives you a load. Randy White also came out to help out. Franco got more than it looked like he got. Seven, in fact, second and three. Meyer has more than enough for the first down and has enough to get into Dallas territory for Pittsburgh. Audible call by Bradshaw, and Dallas tried to move into the defense after he had made the audible call, and he ran it right through there anyway. Pittsburgh quarterback is on. Rocky Blyer does so many good things. Tom mentioned a minute ago about how he stuck with that block, and he's one of the best blocking backs you'll find anywhere. With Franco. First down Pittsburgh, Dallas territory now. Bradshaw gives flyer. And again, he gets good yardage. Underneath, over the. now number 57 get out in front of this here's the veteran watch this block he makes young people watch it he takes Harris and cuts him right in half and Franco goes laterally about five yards with no move at all and I'll tell you downfield he runs like a halfback and hits like a fullback doesn't he first down Pittsburgh at the Dallas 28 Franco Harris operating very efficiently trigger on that one and he waited to get into Dallas territory with the running game and look at this he squeezed off around I'll tell you Stallworth comes across the middle has never felt the pressure of defensive backs they'll get good pop blocking they go right out and take Dallas on the line of scrimmage the stun doesn't bother look at this throw that's dead on that's a third touchdown for Stallworth in the last two games Second touchdown pass today by Bradshaw. One to Swan, now one to Stallworth. Jarella makes it 21-13, Pittsburgh over Dallas. Here it is again. Oh, speed. Announcing the new Firestone Steel Belted Radio 721 with five million miles of development testing behind it. Testing that tears at tires. Testing that scorches them with the heat of high speeds. Testing that plows them through a flood of salt water that pounds and punishes them from sunup to sundown. Testing that tortures out the secrets, like the performance of our new 721 tire cord with 10 strands of steel where we had five before the strongest steel cord we ever made for car tires. Tough testing proved this new 721 radio. But remember, the safety of even a tough tire also depends on you. Be careful where and how you drive. Don't overload. Check air pressure. Check wear. Check your Firestone dealer for the new 721. It's Firestone's finest radio ever. Pittsburgh 21. Those amazing Steelers. That's the scoring drive that made it that way. 
21-13. The Steelers over Dallas. Zarella kicks off. A high, long kick. It will be Butch Johnson bringing it out of his own end zone. And Butch gets outside the 20 to about the 23. Jim Smith led the tacklers. Terry Bradshaw's two touchdown passes. And Franco Harris, 61-yard touchdown run. Half the Steelers in front. And do not bury the Cowboys. They have speed and they have class at the skilled positions. They have people like Pearson and a little named Dorsett that can get you back in the game in one mistake. Roger Staubach. John Fitzgerald just picked up the football. The Duke. Roger Staubach on first and ten. Has Newhouse and Dorsett behind him. And here is Tony Dorsett behind Burton Lawless. A few, but tough ones. Lauren Taves, the outside linebacker, made the tackle, number 51. You're so happy when he only gets five yards that you feel like the defense has closed him off completely. San Francisco now on the board with a touchdown, and the Rams do not have an easy way in the fourth period. 17-10, that score. And Drew Pearson hasn't caught a ball yet, number 88. Might be one of the keys. He scored the first touchdown, you might recall, in Super Bowl X coming across. He's had a couple in his direction. And he's been popped a couple of times. Dorsett got three. So it'll be second and seven. Line of scrimmage, the Dallas, 27. Draw play. Dorsett bounces off a couple, and look at him. All on his own. Lauren Taves finally made the tackle, and Dorsett is near a first down. I'm telling you, he was hit at the line of scrimmage, and somehow he gets both feet on the ground. The penalty flag may walk it off, but this young man can hit, and he can take it. Bob Frederick and his crew, Bob is the referee, will let us know what happened. It's my old buddy from Colorado. He better tell us what happened. Jim Allen signaling back that way, back their way. Those guys in white. <laughs> Offensive holding, number in. Garble transmission, which is just as well. We don't like to point the finger. The penalty's bad enough without being maimed. It'll be second and 17 now for Dallas. From behind Roger Staubach, look at this. The crowd comes alive on second and 17. Great drop. There it is. Drew Pearson's first reception of the day. Jim Allen on the coverage. And you can keep him quiet for a while, but not forever. Now, I'll tell you one thing. Roger has to load it up in a hurry. The Steelers just came with four people, and they all almost got there. High throw, and Pearson just keeps it in bound and tries to steal an extra yard or two. Watch the rush. Watch this. He takes two with him, trying to open it up so Furness can cut up the pipe, and then Joe goes ahead and makes the rush himself. He's down 11 pounds from that 270-something. He looks like he's pretty healthy. I think he got all of his vitamins. He had missed a meal, I'll tell you that. First down for Drew Pearson. Roger Staubach moves Dorsett deep, fakes to Dorsett, throws outside, overthrows, puts Johnson, the intended receiver, stopped and covered by J.T. Thomas. Houston 10 now, Seattle 3. Houston's record in the AFC Central was 4 and 5. They could get it up to 500. Talk about a race. Cleveland's already won, so they're 6 and 4. Pittsburgh trying to go 6 and 4. Cincinnati won. They beat Miami. They're 5 and 5. But make no mistake, the 8-1 Cowboys want this game so badly. Not for percentage or average, but they don't want to lose to this team. They may see them later on. And they, of course, are aware of the fact that St. Louis has already won. St. Louis chasing. The Cowboys should lose. The Cardinals would only be one game back. Starbuck, back. Kick it off! Kick it off! Jimmy Allen down the sideline. He might go. At the two, he is down. Ralph nearly on the tackle, but Allen made the interception. 
And Roger looked at Dupre all the way and laid it right in there, and he's really been guiding the ball. He has really been making two short. And Allen's got the great speed. He's limping a little bit, but I have a feeling that hurt will go away. All right, watch this. Roger looks all the way at Dupre coming by and now tries to straighten it right in there. Excellent move by the safety man. Kept off the white line. And now Neely comes up to snuff him there. And it's first and goal for the Steelers. Franco has a touchdown on the Steelers. They lead 27 to 13 all of a sudden. Terry Bradshaw, the dribble at one. Offside, the line. In the background, underneath the roar of the crowd, you could hear Bob Frederick saying the defense was offside, but that's academic. Chuck Noll welcomes Franco Harris after his second touchdown of the day. What was that touchdown drive? One play? Two yards. <laughs> Seven. Flags are down again, but... Durello's kick is good to make it 28-13, Pittsburgh. And this battle may have just begun. There's a long fourth period that stretches out in front. Defense, offside, points good. And we can Here was a touchdown by Frank O'Hara. Weak side run. Look at the blocking. A stand-up job, his second of the day. He has 139 yards. I'm talking about number 32. Number 50, who threw that key block, was Jim Flack, the offensive guard. And he just shut off Aaron Kyle. The CBS Sports Spectacular next Saturday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time will feature the Los Angeles Times 500. Also a countdown to Super Bowl as we retrace what happened this year in the world's strongest men competition are lifting women they have a girl in a cage <laughs> on okay. each side all right of the strongest guy she weighs 110 pounds each girl i mean right and they pick her up in the cage and the girl doesn't gain weight but they put more <laughs> weight in the cage <laughs> that's on the sports spectacular <laughs> i thought that was a battle of the superstars I thought when I first heard about it that the girls are going to try to gain weight. <laughs> Roy Girella approaches the kick. Brooks Johnson and Larry Brinson are deep, and Brinson will start at a stop, and now he brings it out. The rookie from Florida gets outside the 20. Still on his feet, Larry Brinson still on his feet after the 40. What an effort. Brent Sexton finally made the tackle. Remember, we're still in the third period. Besides, oh, I'm out there. I'm caught now. This young man, by the way, just barely made the squad. Talk about the extra effort and balance again. There's Jarella in a feeble attempt of at a tackle. <laughs> Larry Brinson is a free agent. Free spirit, too, from Florida. Cowboys believe he's going to be a fine player. He just showed you why they believe that on that kickoff return. First down, Cowboys at their own 39. Ten to go, five minutes to go in the third quarter. Starbuck gets to Newhouse. Winston chases him down along with Jack Ham. That defense is fired up now. And Jack Ham always made the defensive play on the sweep look so easy that you sometimes thought everybody should do it that way. So quick. Oh, he's so quick, and he's about 200 and... 15 or 16 pounds. He looks undersized. He just is always in the right place. Bum Phillips group leading Seattle 13 to 3. Shows you their record a little bit earlier. They're 4 and 5, trying to get it 5 and 5. The AFC Central is something else again. Staubach, the Dorset. A few, but not many. Ernie Holmes, number 63. Ernie Holmes has really given Fitzgerald a, a tough afternoon down there, and Fitzgerald's got to be one of the top two or three centers in football and big Ernie number 63 is just packing it in 
That'll bring up a third down situation for the Cowboys. Six yards to go. I mean, bring in the group that they figure operates better on a passing situation. Steelers. Nothing is easy, but their schedule from here on in is not that difficult. They play the Jets next week. Dallas. Rough road. Rogers saw that look. Finally pulls it down. Throws finally. Knocked down on the sideline by J.T. Thomas. And Dallas and Danny White will have to punt. And Roger was just glad he could throw it to somebody and get it knocked down. Listen to this crowd. And Art Rooney must be up clapping with him. Talked to Mr. Rooney at the half. And I said to him, good first half. He said, I wish it was over. They were ahead 14-13 at the half. Dangerous punt return, man. And as we said, Smith doesn't even know what the fair catch signal is. Jim Smith is number 86. Number 11 there is Danny Wright. Ah, kick again, aiming for out of bounds. Smith lets it go there. Just barely out of bounds, no return. At the 20-yard line is where it's marked. Just looking ahead at the schedule for Dallas, and keep in mind that St. Louis, the pursuers have already won. Dallas has Washington in Washington next week, then Philadelphia, then San Francisco, and they finish with Denver. And Philadelphia played Dallas tough two or three weeks ago, too. That whole schedule's rough. The Rams now 20 to 10 over San Francisco. The Steelers' remaining schedule, the Jets, Seattle, Cincinnati, San Diego. There's Rocky Blyer. Blyer knocked down hard by Bob Brunick, the middle linebacker. You know, i got to believe that Chuck knows preparation, and they tell me there were some three-hour practice sessions, which is unheard of, really, uh, in modern football, but because of the crazy offense that Dallas has, plus the getting their own offense together, they know really work these guys hard upstairs, you know, and Cerebral team is a pretty good team, and it looks to me like their game plan offensively is excellent. We haven't had one call for Thomas Henderson, the great linebacker today, not yet. Three-yard pickup by Blyer makes it second and eight, and Rocky comes in motion, and Franco Harris comes behind him. Franco taken down by Charlie Waters on a good play. A gambling play. Remember, the Dallas team has intercepted at least one pass in every game. Not yet today. A long yardage situation now for Dallas, a situation that everybody who faces them dreads because they make so many defensive changes. They come with six defensive backs and 16 different kinds of blitzes. Armed, too. <laughs> the Steelers have handled it well, and so has that guy, Terry Bradshaw. Good day for him. Makes the draw. He throws the screen. And it's set up well. Rocky Flyer out close to midfield in Dallas territory before he's down by Penny Barnes. What a place to call a screen, though. Dallas having some trouble maintaining the line of scrimmage. Watch them come this time. And Too Tall Jones chases Bradshaw back along with the safety blitz. Now watch Webster, number 52, the offensive center. Downfield blocking is tough, huh? He gets Harris down. And Lynn Swan was even trying to block downfield. That's an effort. That is one of the most difficult plays in football to execute. The screen pass. It looks so easy. But believe me, it's not. And you'll never see it done any better than that right there. Rocky Blyer on the receiving end. And Franco Harris this time carries and gets back for a couple. Jeff Throw Pew came out on the pursuit and made the tackle. The whole line came out of the pursuit. The whole defensive line just moved it over, and D.D. Lewis st stacked it up long enough. Now they're chasing hard, and they know they've got to get the ball back. Now if you go with misdirection, look one way and screen another, anything now that Bradshaw might want to come up with, they could keep this ball alive. Just saw Lynn Swan talking to Terry. And I got my guy. You ever <laughs> see a receiver who didn't want to catch the ball every play? All of them on every play. You wouldn't want a receiver if you didn't think he could get open, would you? That's right. Second and nine. Line of scrimmage, the Dallas 47. It's 
Ooh. Jethro Pugh leading that charge. You know how many conversations are going on on every play, and obviously the folks at home not only do not want to hear what's being said, but we can't let them, but there is talking among all 22 as they come together on each play. That's the end of the third quarter with the score. The Pittsburgh Steelers 28, the Dallas Cowboys 13. We now pause for word from your local station. Lucy invites the president to dinner in a hilarious special featuring ex-sidekicks Vivian Vance and Gail Gordon tomorrow night on CBS. Ladies and gentlemen, earlier today you watched the punt, pass, and kick competition, which is sponsored by the Ford Dealers of America and the NFL. The six winners here today will represent the Pittsburgh Steelers at the AFC competition on December the 18th in Houston, and presenting the trophies to the area champions are Bob Stitch, Frank Costelli, and Bud Pasco. The eight-year-old winner is from Freeport, Pennsylvania, Jeff Christie. The nine-year-old winner from Pittsburgh, George Cupids. The 10-year-old champion is Donald Raymer, Jr. from Toronto, Ohio. The 11-year-old champion is Harry Buell III from Salzburg, Pennsylvania. The 12-year-old winner is Scott Hopwood from Elkins, West Virginia. And the 13-year-old winner is Michael Beaufort from Fairmont, West Virginia. Congratulations, and now let's send these youngsters to the division championship competition with a nice round of applause. Joe Green looking on. Hard to believe he's one of the real nice guys off the rectangle, but he is. White, white. But the offensive unit is the unit at center stage right now. And Terry Bradshaw is the central attraction. Number 12. Takes. Throws to Stallworth. Flag is down. Lyman has got to be downfield, like four. I'll tell you, that's just a play we thought you might be able to get away with, but did you ever see so many Dallas Cowboys riding over? Benny Barnes was the first Cowboy to ride. Flag went down immediately as the Steelers had to have guys downfield. Offside. That's how far they were downfield. And on the screen, you know, if you have to fool with the ball to get it out the way Bradshaw did, they, they take about a count and then go. The old screens, the four and five count screens are dead now. Offense, offside, declined. Defense just too quick. So Roy Jarella will punt. Cowboys send that guy back, which Johnson, number 86. I beg your pardon, Bobby Walden. You scared Jarella to death. <laughs> he hasn't been called in four games. Right, he hasn't tried a field goal in four games. to Butch Johnson, who signals for a fair catch at the 17. Cowboys put on a reasonably good rush, but not too much. The score, the Steelers 28, the Dallas Cowboys 13. Don't you think the St. Louis Cardinals aren't looking on this afternoon? 
Introducing the Ford in your future. The new Ford Fairmont Wagon. A new wagon designed for today and the years ahead. The Fairmont Wagon has excellent mileage ratings. But while it is trim and lean outside, Fairmont has almost 90% of the passenger space of most large wagons. And with a seat down can swallow up all this cargo. Yet for all this, the new Fairmont Wagon as shown is actually sticker price less than this little VW Rabbit. Test drive Fairmont. The newest better idea from the Wagon Master. When do you stay? Wiser. I stayed with every stroke of my brush. When do you stay? Right now, or any time that's right for a cold beer is perfect for the smooth taste of the king of beers, Budweiser. When you say Budweiser, now that's a masterpiece. You said it all. This is Charlton Heston. Please join me and a host of celebrities as the American Film Institute salutes America's greatest movies, Monday at 9.30, 8.30 Central and Mountain. Tom Landry, the head coach of the Dallas Cowboys, looking on. His team trails 28-13. They have the football at their own 28. Here comes Drew Pearson in motion. Tony Dorsett in motion. Dorsett cuts back for perhaps four. Lauren Taves made the tackle, number 51. That's spelled T-O-E-W-S. Spelled that way make, it, make it multiple choice i'm really in trouble <laughs> did you notice dorset didn't run by his interference his own blockers were in his wake he is still in a hurry and that's what youth will give you you can be in a hurry there's franco he's got 143 yards rushing already i've forgotten about that youth but dorset is quick <laughs> second and five he got five roger Staubach drops the throw and throws Caught by Jay Saldi. A heck of a catch. JT Thomas made sure he stayed down. They tell me Jay Saldi has really developed. Uh, the reason is that uh, Guinea's work so darn hard. Ditka told us he's the hardest working person he's ever worked with on receivers. Now watch this catch. It's a tough catch on a slippery rug in a foreign place, Pittsburgh. Lynn Swan, who has made some tough catches on his own. Pretty good little television commentator, too. He did a good job. Yes. Spent some time with Mike Ditka last night, and his friends weigh over 300 pounds. <laughs> 2310, Los Angeles over San Francisco. Mike, of course, played great tip as well. Here is Robert Newhouse cutting back. Out near the 40. Dennis Winston, the middle linebacker. Made the tackle on Chuck Noll, the wine connoisseur. Also the Steeler head coach. Used to be the old Cleveland Brown guard. Messenger guard he was. I remember he, I think he bit me once on the arm. I was just trying to get out of bounds. And he only played every other play. <laughs> and still bit. Guards aren't supposed to still have their teeth. That's what bothered me. He had a pretty good bite. <laughs> he alternated with John Wooten, didn't he? <laughs> He's now a member of the Dallas organization. Second and three. Cowboys on the move for the moment at least. Or set in motion. Cut, cut, cut. Back to Newhouse and Newhouse. Gets enough for a first down behind the blocking of Rafferty. Joe Green and Jack Ham made the tackle. Tell you, Dorsett got in here and tried to block for Newhouse. Let's watch it. Number 33, who got the ball all the time, goes to the right of your screen. Gives it a shot. First and ten. The Steelers season this year very similar to what happened to them last year. They like to get their backs to that wall, don't they? And then scratch. As Joe Green said, the time for talking is over. It's time for playing. They've been doing it. Dorset behind the fake. He throws outside. Burton Lawless was out there with Dorset. And Burton, who has never caught a pass that I know of. Watch that with whistle under his arm. Well, they're going to call. Uh, the flag was dropped late for an intentional grounding, and I think it's really a rotten call. Obviously, Lawless was the screen blocking guard on that thing, and Dorsett was right in his shadow, and I don't think this is a legitimate call at all. Illegal receiver touching the ball downfield. He didn't catch the ball downfield. You said he was a friend of yours, Bob Frederick. I mean. No friend of Dallas right now or anybody else. I just 
Dorsett was out there with him. Yeah, Dorsett was standing in the shadow, and there were three Pittsburgh Steelers over there. I don't blame Roger for complaining. It's about the only weapon the quarterback has, bless their souls, and that's to unload it once in a while, and he was really trying to throw it to 33. Loss of down, too, you know. Yeah. 33 became 66. Ineligible touching the ball downfield. And it's a loss of a down also. Second down. Second down. Second down. He really wants it to be second down. Seventh penalty for the Dallas Cowboys, and that one may have taken a lot of wind out of the old sails. They had something going for a few seconds. So it's second and 20. Lionel is now back at their own 37 as Rogers saw by fire. Caught by Drew Pearson. Spins away from a couple. Still gets away from a couple. And gets the Dallas first down. Mel Blunt was in the tackle of Drew Pearson that time, but Drew still got the first down. He averages about 17 or 18 yards a catch, and some of it is, is just incredible gymnastics. Now watch him come across. Now remember this secondary. They've been banging him all day. He doesn't give up here. Now Mel Blunt gets him by the arm in a minute and tries to wring his neck with it, and Drew still won't go down. The Dallas Cowboys believe that there is no contest as to who has got the skinniest legs in pro football. They'll tell you it's Drew Pearson. And the smooth set of hands, huh? And tough. Dorsett looks like he's going to throw. Still looks like he's going to throw. Finally found the handle, and he was stopped by Ernie Holmes and Lauren Taves. Look where Drew Pearson is. He's down on the 15-yard line all by himself. I think he was trying to throw and might have lost control and decided. Yeah, he was going to pass. He has thrown one already this year for a completion against Washington, and he had that in mind then, but just couldn't get all together in time. Oakland and San Diego in a rather surprising happening. 12 to 7, the Chargers over. Oakland in the fourth quarter. Fouts back at quarterback, huh? Came back last week after that long holdout, and after saying he'd never play for them again. He's back playing, second and eight. Dorsett, a two-yard pickup. Staubach behind good protection this time. Deflected by somebody in the front four. Joe Green, I think, got the big hand. Oh, I'll tell you, Joe Green on the line of scrimmage has really been savage. I'm not kidding. Watch the right part of your screen. Rafferty's throwing it in there. Joe has been using the arm whip and throwing people away like nobody. Now watch him get off balance and then get it up. Wet powder just didn't come off, did it? It's like the World Trade Center coming down on top of you. <laughs> It'll be third and eight. Preston Pearson is in the game. An excellent receiver. Golden Richards foot wide to the right. Drew Pearson left. A lot of folks. Over the head. They intended for Jay Salvi. Couldn't quite hang on, and it bounced off him. Looks like they're going to punt. we got nine minutes and 53 seconds left to play, and again, the defense comes off to the acclaim of this Pittsburgh Steeler crowd. 28-13, they lead. Another sellout for the team of Art and Dan Rooney. And I'll tell you, one of the great stadiums to come to, you really feel like it's Boy, isn't football. It nice? huh? Isn't it nice? It's been Steeler football today as Danny White tries again for the sideline, tries again to get it away from Smith, Burton Lawless, and Tom Henderson down looking at it go out of bounds. You know, Dallas has been preparing for Pittsburgh, thinking Pittsburgh's going to fumble the ball four or five times. We might get two or three interceptions. It simply has not happened. Nine minutes and 45 seconds left to play in this contest, and Pittsburgh in command. Port of call, Caribbean.
Navy. See your local recruiter or call toll free. It's not just a job, it's an adventure. The closer you shave, boy. The closer you shave, boy. The more you will need. The more you will need. Great balls of comfort. Great balls of comfort. To do it with ease. Great balls of comfort. Oh, just like Noxzema. Noxzema. Great, Great balls of comfort to you. The closer you shave, the more you need soothing, medicated Noxzema. Great balls of comfort to you. Woo! in favor of that group run by Terry Bradshaw number 12 9.45 left to play Dallas Cowboys looking like they might lose their second in a row Franco Harris barrels outside the 15 yard line Ed Tall Jones remember when he personally took Minnesota apart in that Super Bowl 158 yards rushing the Oilers, 23 over Seattle. Bradshaw's job now, work the clock, pull that chain a little bit and get the minutes off and take away chances for Dallas to get back in quickly. A few more plays like that would make him happy and see the fans as well. Second down and three. First down, Pittsburgh. That offensive line for Pittsburgh, uh, it's not as renowned as the St. Louis Cardinals or even maybe the Dallas Cowboy bunch, but they do a great job. And when they can't block you, they hold you very well. <laughs> and you know the thing about them, they're not that big. They're all about the same size. When I say not that big, they weigh 245, 250. They have no necks, though. They're just all solid <laughs> guys. They would be big if they had necks. They'd <laughs> be tall. Yeah. First down, Pittsburgh at their own 22. Bradshaw gives to Blyer. And Blyer picks up Randy White and a few others. Pittsburgh's not thinking turnover, but Dallas defense is thinking turnover. Let's scrape it, let's grab it, make a bad handoff. Which of those two guys do you think that is in the left-hand corner? Rocky Blyer. He didn't look too rocky then, did he? A nice smile mm. for a hard-nosed football player. But you know, he's still got a great smile. That one of the incredible stories anywhere, not just in sports. The Vietnam veteran who was told that he'd never play again is now one of the better halfbacks in this league. Franco Harris, one of the better fullbacks in this league. Cuts back to his right, stopped by Jeffro Pugh. Man, there's some hitting going on now. There were five Cowboys in on that, on a gang tackle. Again, they're looking for the ball. And you don't want to say it in the huddle like, make sure you hold on to it. You know, you the things that aren't happening, you try to act like they can't. But you don't want to fumble it now. You don't want to let Dallas feel like, they, hey, we can snitch it. But the minute you say don't fumble it, that makes you squeeze it just a little bit harder, and that's when it pops loose. It's got helium in it. There's the other member of that running backfield, Franco Harris. That was taken last year before he had a beard. <laughs> Third down, Franco. Does not get his first down. D.D. D. Lewis wraps around the top part. Cliff Harris had him around the ankle. Is it rough on a Sunday afternoon? Watch this. D.D. Lewis is just playing the best football of his life. Harvey Martin reached the stalemate with the guy who was trying to block him and sort of stacked it up. Benny Cunningham. The tight end is the guy who's down and being looked at now by the Steeler officials. Benny rolling over right now. We have six minutes and 47 seconds left to play in this football game. Pittsburgh 28, Dallas 13. Honey, is this homeowner's insurance high? I don't know. I think it's too much. How would I know? Compare with Allstate. Compare? compare? Bring in your policy and compare rates. If you have a good deal, we'll tell you. But for many, chances are we've got a better deal. We've got a better deal. Allstate might save you some money, but you'll never know until you bring in your policy and compare. Oh, that's a good deal. <laughs> when you want to save on homeowner's insurance, yeah. <laughs> Allstate wants to help. That's a promise from us, the good hands people. The best 
best-selling American-made small car versus Japan's best-seller. Hello, I'm Jackie Stewart at Indianapolis. Which small car accelerated to highway speed quickest? In the highway entrance test, 78 Ford Pinto reached highway speed faster than a Datsun B210. Faster than a Toyota Corolla. Faster than a Honda Civic. With added features, Pinto sticker prices are lower than last year. Check out all the Pintos at your local Ford dealer. Another better idea from Ford. Big Bobby, excuse me, sorry, Big Cunningham walked off, the big kid from Clemson. He was limping, but he was walking. This college team finished on a positive note. With a few close and anxious moments yesterday. The near line for the Gator Bowl looks like. Dallas is coming. Walden is back number 39. Puts Johnson alone. And here it is. Get it. And they do get him, though. And a flag goes down. And Pittsburgh will keep the football. Bobby Walden. And I don't believe he was faking it. I believe he was a little bit gimpy. He is still a little bit gimpy. <laughs> <laughs> he's not only right, gimpy, buddy. but he's mad. <laughs> Oh, Bobby Walden, you're on television. If he, he gets it off. That's the main thing. If he just wear a full face mask, we wouldn't have seen that. Said the magic words. Running into the kicker defense, number 43. First down. Steeler first down. They lead 28-13 over Dallas. The ball now out there, 35. That is a final score. That game over on the West Coast. Los Angeles, 23. San Francisco, 10. The Ram record goes to 7-3. Atlanta lost. They are 5-5 five and five now, so... The Ram really two games. Here is Franco Harris breaking a couple of tackles. Franco Harris near a first down. Charlie Waters got him out of bounds. That ought to do some all-time figures for Franco. That puts him over. His best was in the Super Bowl, 158 yards. He had 157 once on 41 carries against Cincinnati. But this puts him over that. And, he, of course, the 61-yard burst may have set the tone for the whole game. I'll tell you, Clack that time, Jim Clack came out and took D.D. Lewis in from the, uh, from the outside position and one of the great blocks you'll ever see. We saw Dallas early in the year when they were really playing well, and honestly, they haven't been playing real well in recent weeks. But Pittsburgh, I think, is as good as we've seen all year right now. I think they're they're very physical. If you want my spot, okay, knock me off of it. And that kind of a team under this kind of a coach, pretty tough late in the year. Tom Landry and Roger Staubach looking on. I think he's on Harris, you got 164 yards on 25 carries. Previous best, Tom, uh, was 157 yards against Cincinnati back in 1975. So Big Franco looks like he's going to do 1,000 at least again. And he plays hurt extremely well. He'll give it a shot. Second and a very short half yard as Rocky Blyer will go for that and get it. Wrapped up by Ed Jones, but he still got the first down. I'm not so sure that Dallas hasn't played well. I just think that Pittsburgh, since the 61-yarder by Harris, they just seem to have been in control. As the yard markers move up for Pittsburgh first down, the crowd begins to sense that this one goes into the W column for the Steelers. They lead 28-13. We now have five minutes and 40 seconds roughly left to play. Peter line of scrimmage at their own 46. Terry Bradshaw, the quarterback, as he has been all day. Franco Harris stops and cuts back on the far side and goes down without, without too much. Stopped by Dee Dee Lewis. Look at that final score. San Diego 12, Oakland 7. San Diego's record goes to 5-5, five and five, and Denver takes over first place in the Western Division of the AFC. And Snake Stabler did have a strained knee and did not finish the football game as the Oakland quarterback. Speaking of strained knees, there's Benny Cunningham. Tight end for Pittsburgh, who has a left leg problem, looks like left knee problem. 
Denver is down nine and one. Oakland now eight and two. It's going to be a reverse to Stall. Try to lateral, got it back. Brunick, Charlie Warner, wrap it up. Almost that crucial fumble. Everybody inhaled. Waters plays it beautifully. The safety man comes up and is waiting for the reverse. Of course, the Cardinal sin would be to let Stallworth get outside, which number 41 does not allow. Even spins back and gets the tackle, he and Randy White. Watch the ball come up. I told you, everybody inhaled. <laughs> Cowboys have a man hurt. Looks like uh, Thomas Henderson, who doesn't want to leave, but now he is. Place taken by Mike Hegman, number 58. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on there. Waters is shaken up too. He made a spin around and got that slap on the head, I think. I tell you, it's a physical game. See that roll out of a block like you just saw Waters execute there. It was a pretty good lesson from a, for a young, aspiring football player. That's a good way to get away from a block. Bradshaw, by the way, has used up about uh, four and a half minutes on that clock. We have four minutes and 15 seconds left to play now. The Steelers lead it 28-13. Their ball at their own 45. Bradshaw's up back to pass. Harvey Martin has him get away and again get away. And finally, Mike Hegman takes him down. Randy White back there with him. And I mean took him down in rough style, and Bradshaw, Bradshaw is on the ground. He has that bad left wrist. That's the first sack of the day on Bradshaw. And the team came in with 40 of them. Terry's getting up. He's, He's all up. right. JoJo's right behind us, and she's worrying, but he's up, JoJo. JoJo Bradshaw, his wife, watches him come off. Here's the play again. One of the great football games, other than that Super Bowl, when he was just simply fantastic, is this one. There is Harvey Martin getting a shot, and Gregory, and White, and finally... The hit by Hegman. Hegman has, that did the job, huh? 39 is Bobby Walden. Back for Dallas, number 86 is Brooke Johnson. Will they or won't they? They've tried a few times, and have come close. I kick from Waller and up goes the hand for fair catch from Butch Johnson. Dallas football at their own 35-yard line. Don't forget next on CBS 60 Minutes. And you wonder, would the United States betray a man who risked his life to help our country? Well, a former CIA agent says we did that to thousands, in fact, and then try to cover it up. That'll be covered on 60 Minutes tonight here on CBS. In its entirety. <laughs> you see it all. <laughs> First down, Cowboys. Own 35, Starbuck. Drew Pearson. Looked, got hit by Dennis Winston and Drew lying on his back right there. Winston... Dirt Winston has hit everybody on both teams. Look at this. He's got Thomas down. Dirt's still down. Drew Pearson got up and moved out of the area. They're going to... Winston may be hurt, too, but I'll tell you, he has not stopped cracking people. Middle linebacker is to the top right of your screen, 53. Now, watch what happens at the junction. He's taking anything that's in a football suit. They hit each other. Pearson ducked underneath. Razorback's tough, you know it. He is. <laughs> sure likes really. to stay close to the ground. That's where he is. Schlitz Light. Schlitz Light beer has a third fewer calories than our other fine beer, and all the taste beer drinkers expect from Schlitz. Is that what that guy always drinks? That's his beer. It's the only light beer with gusto. I'll have a Schlitz Light. Make it two. Beer drinkers know it took Schlitz to bring the taste to light. 
You don't have to lose sleep worrying about that drive to work tomorrow. Not when you've got Firestone Snowbiters going with you to dig you out and pull you through. They've got two sets of deep biting teeth. And in between, traction bars for quiet running and long mileage. In radios, bias, or retreads, they'll put teeth in your winter driving. Firestone Town and Country Snowbiters. Pleasant dreams. On the sidelines. <laughs> I have never seen that treatment before. They had to drag Dirk Winston off, not because he was hurt, because he wanted to stay in the play. Rollin Cole took his place. Roger Staubach dropped the throw. Firing deep for Jay Salvi. Almost picked off by Glenn Edwards. Salvi, the tight end. Tony Dungy was back there with him. Watch him come at you. Glenn Edwards was just sitting, waiting for the ball. Down the middle, tight end. Sally with good speed, but Edwards, of course, flexed and playing a little bit loose. Really just read this one all the way. I don't know if Rogers thrown the ball that well today or not. Of course, we've seen him when he's he's always the 60% passer and all, but I think that hand's bothering him a little bit. He I didn't really throw good. that one. There's Benny Cunningham, who walked off, but now he's limping in a more serious fashion. And looks like uh, Benny Cunningham might be headed for the locker room. Brian tight end, that we might see Larry Brown move back to that position. Here is Roger Staubach. Firing. It is picked off by Dungy. The Steelers come up with another interception. The pass intended for Jay Salvi. And Tony Dungy made the interception. And Mike Wagner is no longer back there. He's had the back injury this year. They fought the secondary. Uh, with Shell out now, might have been weak, but this is a very jubilant young player, Dungey, who is a pretty good quarterback if he's called upon. There was a time when he was called upon. Three minutes, 13 seconds left to play in this game, and the Steelers lead 28 to 13 over Dallas, and they have the football. It is still Bradshaw at quarterback. Randy Grossman has taken Cunningham's place at tight end. Bradshaw gets to Harris. Franco barrels straight ahead for four. Bob Brunig made the tackle. You know what I'm thinking? I'm wondering if the old men down in Washington are watching this game, the McDoles and the Brundages, and those people thinking, hey, we got these guys coming to our ball yard on Sunday afternoon. And you know Conrad Dobler and his group are looking on because they already won today. The Cardinals, I mean. And if Dallas loses, that means that St. Louis will be just one game behind the Dallas Cowboys. And the Cardinal schedule from here on out is much, much easier than what Dallas faces. Kicks back to Harris. Franco cuts inside, cuts down close to the 30. Not quite a first down, but almost. You see the, the Blyer block that time? Knocked Didi Lewis straight over backwards. Well, let's see. I didn't see it. All right, watch to the right of your screen. It's a show and tell. Watch number 20. I've seen a lot of 230-pound backs not do that. Rocky Blyer is number 20. At about 2'8". There he is. The Steelers, impressive, emphatic in holding that lead over Dallas. Time was when a man spent a good part of his time laying in firewood for the winter. Maybe firewood is an idea whose time has come again. And today, cutting firewood is a lot easier, thanks to Homelite, the chainsaw king. And now is a great time to buy your Homelite. Because if you invest in this Homelite XL right now, you can save $30. And on other selected models, you get a free carry case. From Homelite, the chainsaw king. Hello, everybody. This is Lowell Thomas. Alaska, tough on people, tough on auto parts. So we took Motorcraft heavy-duty batteries, oil filters, and tune-up parts to Alaska, testing them in 50 GM, Chrysler, and Ford cars and trucks. After six months of Alaskan pipeline country, less than 1% of the parts couldn't take the punishment. No matter what you drive, wherever you drive, ask for Motorcraft auto parts from Ford. Tested tough in Alaska. So long. 
somebody's listening to us. And we say hello. And goodbye. Uh, third down situation as Blyer goes in motion and Harris goes behind him with the football. Franco Harris. Two to 25, another. Pittsburgh Steeler first down, stopped by Cliff Harris. Stock. This Dallas defense only allows about 114 yards rushing per game, and Franco's got 179 yards by himself, and Flyer's got another 40. Franco Harris comes out to the acclaim of the crowd. <laughs> We've been wondering. where Phyllis is. <laughs> Actually, she's back in the studio with Brent and Irv. I don't know how they worked that out, but that's what happened. We're out here on location. We have no control over things. The Celebrity Challenge of the Sexes tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern Time here on CBS featuring Sarah Fawcett Major and other celebrities of much acclaim. Don't forget that tonight, 8 o'clock. One minute left to play as you look in that Steeler huddle, and they're confident right now. Five! Five on the 50-yard line! Hey, Charlie, was cold last night. You put in the Prestone in the freeze? Prestone, Prestone. Who needs Prestone? Prestone, Prestone? You. Need Prestone. If your antifreeze is worn out or you don't have enough, you could be in trouble. So put in a fresh fill of Prestone, too, to prevent corrosion and freeze ups. Prestone, Prestone. We need Prestone. Prestone, Prestone. You need Prestone. Ed White, you're one of the strongest men in football, but I'll bet that one drop of Eastman 910 adhesive is stronger than you are. No way. It's been less than a minute, and even you won't be able to pull them apart. Oh, come on. If one drop of Eastman 910 is stronger than Ed White, imagine how it can handle the tough jobs around the house. Incredible. Ed? Mr. White? Eastman 910 adhesive. One drop is stronger than you are. Steelers on the football on second down. Bill Bradshaw is still the quarterback. Delaplane's in there now. Flag goes down. It's Jack Delaplane. Place of Franco Harris. Delaplane gets down to about the 17. Cliff Harris and Charlie Waters converge to make the tackle. Flag went down, you saw early. Number 38 checks in for the Pittsburgh Steelers now. Patrick, number 52 right there, Webster. Is the some kind of a football player, the offensive center, I'll tell you that, for the Steelers. That whole bunch, Davis, Cobb, uh, the entire group, Clack, they've all just done a great job. I mean, against a heck of a defensive line. Webster's arms look like a big pine tree. Defense, offside, unsportsmanlike conduct, offense, replay. Play that one again, that run by Delaplane. Sid Thornton into the Steeler backfield. Terry Bradshaw right there, the quarterback, and that's his wife, JoJo Starbuck. She's just happy to see him out there yelling again at the officials and feeling good. She was worried about it. We were asking a minute ago, she thought Terry hurt a minute ago when he was down on the field, and she said he, she thought it was his wrist. And Tom said, you're going to have to wait on him. I said, I always do anyway. <laughs> Monday mornings or something around the house, right? <laughs> Super Skates will be on CBS. JoJo will be performing and commentating, which is something we've never been able to do. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> we need some help like JoJo. <laughs> yeah. You realize that Dallas has only had the ball for three plays since the 9.15 mark of the fourth period, and Noel is still breathing fire. Oh, he made a match. 54 seconds left to play. Bradshaw gives to Sid Thornton. Number 38 is stopped by Randy White as he gets down to about the 22 and a half yard line. The Dallas Cowboys now call a timeout. Score is 28-13, Pittsburgh over Dallas. Sid Thornton, by the way. There's Terry Bradshaw coming over. Talk with Chuck Nolan. 
I'll tell you one thing. Landry will not have any alibis. No. Just after the St. Louis game or when they almost lost to Philadelphia, he said, we're just really not playing that good football. And even as talented as we are, we've got to mature and we've got to get better and we've got to have the intensity. And I think this game really proves that. No matter how good you are at the skilled positions and all that, you've got to go out and out hit people, too. He said it was inevitable. As you said, we haven't been playing very well and you knew that somebody was going to beat us. Here's Tom Landry. And Stallings. Gene Stallings, yeah. That's and Terry Bradshaw, of course, back into the offensive huddle for Pittsburgh. 42 seconds left in this contest. The Steelers have the football. Third down. Bradshaw gives to Delaplane. Jack Delaplane scoops to about the 16. Randy White chased him down. Not a first down for Pittsburgh. And again, Dallas calls a timeout. So with 31 seconds left to play, it looks like the Steelers got this one locked up. 28-13, they lead. trademark <laughs> don't forget next on CBS 60 minutes and you'll see it in its entirety Jack Delaplane cuts back inside Chuck Milton who always does such a great job for us incredible worker isn't he he's been the producer and Sandy Grossman has been responsible for the pictures you've seen and they speak for themselves Grossman always gets us those exercise beds so we at least get a good night's sleep. Is that who does that? 25 seconds left to play. Noel is still hot. He was They just threw a flag in there and got him for being out of the coaching box and he threw the flag back at the official a minute ago. <laughs> and they might get him again. 25 seconds left to play. Steelers 28. Dallas Cowboys 13. Second loss in a row for Dallas as Rogers Stallback operates from the top ten and throws to Preston Pearson. 19 seconds. Tonight on CBS, great night. 60 minutes first, then the celebrity challenge of the sexes, followed by Kojak, right? One of my favorites. Phyllis George, long time. in that Kojak. challenge of the sexes, Phyllis George goes against Steve Garvey. The the Dodger do everything. That's got to be a good match. 60 minutes, by the way, will be run at its normal time on the West Coast. But wherever you are, you'll see it all in its entirety. Tony Dorsett slips away from one or two. And a flag goes down. That's going to be a face mask against somebody. Robin Cole was the guy who made the tackle. He also might be the guy with the face mask violation. It hurt Dorsett's neck, but I noticed he didn't quit running until they finally put him down. He kept the effort going. It's funny how when you're you're losing to a team the way the Cowboys are right now, all those things hurt, I'm telling you. Yep. Okay, Saldy walking back with uh, TD. Here's that guy we were talking about. He's the third. One and two and then three, huh? Personal foul. 56 for the defense. First down. You believe there's three red eyes? <laughs> it's frightening. Nine seconds left on the scoreboard clock. 28-13. Steelers over the Cowboys. Cleveland has already won. So the Browns.